Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Aero Surfer LV, y'all know me. And this is my friend Ari. I've been talking to him for a few years now. Uh, we exchange ideas about boots and shoes. You know, he picks my brain, I pick his brain. He has a lot of great ideas. Um, very insightful guy. So Ari, if you'd like to uh, give yourself an introduction here, introduce yourself. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Dale, thanks a lot. I'm, I'm excited to talk to you. I mean, you and I have been going back and forth for the last you know, a couple of years. So right. I'm happy to finally jump on a, on a YouTube video. I watch all of yours. Oh, so yes. I'm happy yeah. to be here. I obviously don't <laughs> like post man. like you, but, but I'm a, I'm a big fan nonetheless. Right, right. Hey, that's okay. <laughs> you know, we all have our different hobbies and, and mine is just sharing my passion. You know, we all have, have our jobs and, and my escape is into the world of boots. That's wh that's where I take my mental vacations throughout the day, throughout on my breaks and things. I'm all I'm always ruminating on on boots, and it's always good to find like-minded people that think about this stuff. We have our lives, we have our careers, we have our families, and all this, but we have our hobbies too. That's what is so much fun to is you totally. Know, talk about. And the way I look at it is like I don't know about you. You work from home too now, and I think most yeah. of us do. Um, right. And. You're just staring at a screen all day. I mean, we're doing it now, so I think it's. It, I think if anything, hobbies are more important now than ever, right? Absolutely. There's something. It doesn't matter how small it is, whether it's an Instagram post, an article to read, something to look up. I don't know. To me, at least, just to get away from, because I literally live at work. Right. So this is just a. I'm in a different room, and I feel like I'm in a different place. Yeah. Like even now, as we talk, I live in a one bedroom here in Queens, in New York City. Right. And I'm in the same place every single day for eight, seven, eight, nine hours a day. I'm in the living yeah. room now and I'm like, looks nice here. I should do this more often. Yeah, this is a good change of scenery. <laughs> I'll tell you what, yeah, like I'm at, I'm at home a lot now too. And my greatest escape now, it's so lame, but my greatest escape is just to go walk around the neighborhood and put wear on my boots, but literally oh, yeah. walking. That's now all. you got to get out. Yeah. There have been days where I found myself like more melancholy because I just don't go outside. It's like, because if there's nowhere to go here in New York a couple of months back, yeah, and I'm sure it was similar uh, in DC. I know you're in the verbs a little bit, but like things yeah. were shut down and there was a sense of a lack of control. So every, if you didn't need to go out, you wouldn't go out. Food delivered, you go out for 10 minutes, you come back. Right. So there would be stints where I wouldn't go out for like seven or eight days. And then it would all come at me being like, wow, I'm like, yeah, I don't feel great. Right, right. Mentally, you're, you're not... physically. So yeah, absolutely. Things are, things are better now. So, so now I, I make sure to go out, like you said, at yeah. least once a day, go out for half hour, 20 minutes. Um, right. It just makes all the difference. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, uh, and there's been studies done on, on how travel, in fact, like taking a vacation to an exotic place can have long lasting, like for years, health benefits um, for your mental well-being. You know, just going to see a new country, a new, a new setting, like it does such wonders for our, our mental health. And, uh, you know, that's talking about the, the grand scale, but on a nano scale, we can take these small breaks throughout the day and really improve our mental health. You know, I, I, think, that's, I think that's important. And, and, you know, talking to people and uh, exploring your hobbies, like you said, we need hobbies now more than ever. <laughs> In twenty, yeah, and, and you get all this time to really figure out, at least for me, what you like and what you don't like. Yes, and yes, if you don't like it, then don't do it because you have more time. You know, for me, and I think for most people that are working from home, it's essentially an hour commute, right? Yeah. Whether it's half an hour by the time you get there, walk, it's an hour. So right. now you get these two hours back. That's a lot of time. It is a ton of time. <laughs> spend to spend figuring, you know what you like in your home, what you like in terms of your hobbies, I think it goes, uh, it goes a long way. So yeah, that, that's definitely, that is definitely the truth. Absolutely. Amen to that brother. Yeah. We need, All yeah, right. it, it's good to have a lot of extra time and, you know, and I've been devoting more time to doing some more videos and stuff. Um, I'm actually working on one right now. It might even get released today. I'm, I'm comparing my, my Truman Java wax flesh to my Truman coach Rambler. Um, and it's funny because I didn't get the coach rambler because I had Java wax flesh. And if you could picture those two letters, like the ones that are really dark, completely chocolate, different, just completely different. But to me, different boat. yeah. Uh, but to me, Oh, I already had a Brown cat toe, so I don't need another one. <laughs> well, early on from my understanding, and I, I think I know, knew you then uh, a couple years ago, but you, mm. you had the philosophy of, all right, I have this Brown boot. 
but this brown yeah. shoe. So I'm not going to get the one that's a little bit different. And then I right. think you came to the conclusion of like, it's okay to have different shades, different makeups. Because yeah. sure, they may look similar when you get them out of the box, but one or two wears, the patina starts coming on. Right. They look completely different. Exactly. The Ramblers signif look significantly different from the Trimmins you have. Yes. Yes, it does. Oh my God. It's, it's night and day different. Even if you have the same style, the same color, the same sole, the same eyelets, all that, if the leather is different, if, you, if it's a Kudu versus a suede or a, or a shell versus a Chrome XL, then it's, it is then a different boot. You know, the leather makes it a different boot, not, not the I mean, boot, but the leather. <laughs> I mean, you and I have a couple of these diesels, right? I have, it in, I have it in the Brack Chrome XL on leather. I used to have right. it in the rubber, which, I'm, which I sold. Um, I have it in the Dune color. Yes. And then I have it in Kudu. I mean, if I was to put this in front of a lay person and then show them the diesel, they would think it's a different boot completely because the leather is just yeah. much different. It's not even a different color. It's a different texture. Um, right. I mean, you can, you can clearly see it's, it's completely different. Yes, it is. It is. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, yeah, actually I have my, my Dune diesels here too. Now you just got the toe taps. My, mine have been uh, worn a few times. <laughs> I ask you, I, I mean, talk to me about, so like, uh, again, I, our relationship goes back a couple of years and yeah. you would always prefer, I, I guess you prefer rubber on the boot because you could, you know, hike in it. You can, Mm -hmm. You like beating your boots and then seeing yeah. what they look like and then resoling them, whatever. And then you moved into, okay, I like this makeup, but I want to protect the sole. So I'll mm -hmm. have Sonny the Cobbler, which we both use now, who's a yeah. good guy. Shout out, Sonny. Oh, um, yeah. To Sonny. put toppies. <laughs> to put right, toppies right. on the boot. Yeah. And then you did that for a couple of years. Right. And then I think you got some flack on your Instagram videos yeah. uh, with people saying, hey, you're destroying the boot. That's not the way it's supposed to be worn. You got a couple that said it doesn't breathe well. And then you told me yeah. that, and I forgot what makeup it was at this point, but you're going to get the boot and you're just going to wear it as it should be, right? The purest yeah. as, uh, as Wyatt and his uh, grandfather are. Right. And exactly. so talk to me about what that tra transition was like. Yeah. You, and it, why. It, I'm fascinated by it. Right. It, it was a very fun transition because, yeah, my first introduction to boots, it was like, yeah, I want the commando soles. I want the day night soles, you know, the, the, the rubber, I was all about the rubber and the leather. I always heard, you know, such bad things about it. Oh yeah. Uh, you can't wear it in the rain and blah, 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 blah. And so, salt. yeah, yeah. The salt, Oh, it's going to get in there. It's going to destroy it. And um, so what ended up happening was I was, I was back home for Christmas one year and I had my Alden shell Cordovan uh, cap toes from J crew. And I was getting really paranoid about wearing them in the elements. So I brought them to a local cobbler there and the cobbler said, Oh yeah, I could slap one of these Vibram protective rubber soles on there. It'll take no time. And, and uh, yeah, it'll, it'll protect the sole from debris getting in there and uh, it'll, it'll extend the longevity of your sole by, by a lot. And I said, okay, yeah, let's do that. And so I put them on there and I, and I loved it. I thought, you know, it looks good when you get it back from the cobbler. It looks really clean. Oh yeah. Why didn't, why didn't the uh, manufacturer include that topi to begin with? And, um, and then, so this question started to really uh, penetrate my brain. Like, wh why would they make the leather soles leather to begin with? And so that was always plaguing me. But yeah, then I started making the YouTube videos where I was putting the, having Cobbler Sunny put the Vibram Protective Soles on. And every now and then I would get a comment like, oh, you're, you know, you just, you just ruined the shoe, you know, but they'd never explain themselves. And I'm like, the well, aesthetics. Yeah. The aesthetics. Yeah. And finally one day came, a guy came back to me and he said, well, it, it prevents the flex, you know, so, so the sole can't flex as well. And he said that it also suffocates. Uh, so it suffocates the breathability of the sole as well. And then I said, okay. <laughs> and then, so I started wearing those boots with the topies and I noticed, yeah, the, the sole was super stiff. It was like, it was like the flex was not there to, to backtrack a little bit. That interview with Wyatt between Wyatt and Phil at Ashland, Ashland leather, when Wyatt was talking about his grandpa and how his grandpa just preferred the leather sole, it, you know, he thought it was way more classy looking in his mind from the era that he grew up in the rubber soles were like for roughing around the worker class. Whereas your leather soles are elegant. They're high class. You're going to wear these things to church. You're going to wear these things in, in situations that merit a, a bit more elegance. And so for him putting rubber on there was like 
sort of a mark of degradation. He didn't like that. And so I started to think about that. I ordered my Alden Color 8 long wing bleachers. When those came in, I said, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm I'm gonna to be purist. I'm going to wear them as is. I don't care. I'm not going to put any protection on there. And I want to see how these wear down. That's kind of my evolution with it. I recently, as you know, have been going to Cobbler Sunny and having them strip off that Vibram protective rubber sole and putting on the toe taps because I, I did find that uh, when I got my Grant Stone, my kudus, those storm kudus that you have right there, as well as the Midnight Suede. The Navy, the Navy Ottawa's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the Navy Ottawa's. And then there was one other one that I got and the toe started wearing down real quick on the leather sole. Yeah, it almost went down. I think on one. I think on the uh, on the Ottawa, the navy ones, the midnight. Yeah. It 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 went to the midsole. Yeah. You walked for like five miles in them the first day you got them. <laughs> right. Luckily, the kudus were, were were just fine, and and you were able to put the taps on without any any yeah. extra leather, right? Right. Right. Exactly. But yeah, I wore down that. I wore down the tip of it real bad on that first walk. <laughs> So, so I said, okay, well, I do need some layer of protection. And so that's when, you know, Cobbler Sonny, he was always posting pictures of the Triumph toe taps. And I said, damn, they look so sharp. You know, they look so badass. They do look sharp. Yeah. Yeah. They're brass. And so, and they give you the best of both, both worlds. They give you the flex and the breathability of the leather sole while retaining the protect, some, some level of protection. Obviously it's not going to protect as much of the sole, but that's okay because when you're dealing with this type of stuff, you know, a, a lot of guys, they look forward to their next resole. And frankly, so am I. So that's, that's the way I'm right. going to do it now. Right. If, you kept, if you kept wearing the, the, the Ottawa's, you probably would have needed a resole within a, a couple months because all the wear was happening at the toe. Right. Uh, you showed me a photo. The rest of the sole looked good. I think most people yeah. either wear, wear the toe or the back of the heel because of the pressure, right. you know, the way, the way you're, you're leaning on it. Right, exactly. That's that's one hundred percent how it works. And uh, yeah, I do wear down the heel some. You, can, you might be able to see it there a little bit. Mm. That heel's rubber, so the rubber doesn't wear down as quickly. Right. So, but um, and that's but, easy to replace too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You could just take that off and put a new one on. So that that's not a big deal. So now I've come to let's just say, long story short, I've really come to appreciate leather soles. I notice now that when I'm just walking on the leather sole, it's I could walk quicker and it's more comfortable and the flex is just so much better. And so like with the Vibram protective soles, I, I didn't always notice it on my boots, but I did on the, on my Derby shoes, I just get a little bit of heel slip, not much, but just a little bit to where it was annoying. And so removing the Vibram protective soles and just riding, riding the leather. Now there's zero heel slip. It's a hundred. It feels so natural. And me, you know, I, I like natural stuff, you know, I'm, I'm into natural foods and exercise and things. And, and, I, and I believe, you know, taking as, as much of a natural approach to things as possible. Yeah. Long story short, leather soles have become one of my favorites. Now everybody loves the day night. You know, they love the commando, but leather soles have a place in my heart now. So <laughs> yeah, no, no, I hear you to each their own. I agree with you. Uh, yeah. I thought your interview with Wyatt was interesting because he said he said a, a bunch of uh, great he had a bunch of great points, and, and you mentioned this to Sonny too. You, yeah. In those diesel boots, you mentioned the the heel slip, but also that it felt uneven. And mm -hmm. Wyatt even mentioned that extra one millimeter yeah. changes the difference of the way you walk and like yes. the dimensions of the shoe. Um, whereas when it's stock, right, when the shoe is being built, all those things are taken into consideration in terms of the measurements. Right, right, exactly. And we were talking about this the other day. It's one thing if the boot is built intentionally uh, on a rubber sole, on a commando sole, on a day night, whatever. It's another thing to glue, to bond welt the Vibram protective sole onto this. You know, it's very unnatural. It's very constricting because the boot wasn't designed that way. So basically what you're doing is you're, you're, putting glue on it and you're putting this big sheet of rubber across it the rubber doesn't it doesn't flex with the leather in a natural way and so it leads to a lot of constricting it's a completely different thing if if the boot is already built on the rubber then it's fine and and don't get me wrong i still love my rubber sold shoes but really talking to you over the years and over the months like you've led me to, you've helped lead me to this realization because I know that you were super hesitant to get the Vibram protective layers. Like, like you saw, you know what it was? Yeah. And sorry to interrupt you, man, but like, I, no, no, no. 
I would see your videos and you'd send me photos and I, you would take the photos and the videos and you'd show you walking. And then I would see like the black mat on the bottom of the sole. And I just yeah. felt like you have this beautiful on those black Chrome Excel. Yeah. The antique that Grand Stone, I, I don't know if they still make it or you had it antiqued uh, by Cobbler Sunny. I think they had it at one point where it was a leather sole with the, the cherry antiquing, which I know is your favorite. Oh yeah. Oh, added yeah. the toppies to it and it was just this beautiful shoe. And then I would see like black, I don't know. It just didn't appeal to me aesthetically and I care a ton about aesthetics. Right, right. That makes a lot of sense. Like I said, when, when you first get them back from the cobbler, it looks so great. It looks like just so perfectly finished and beautiful and new. But then as soon as you start walking on them, and especially when you walk on those protective soles a lot, they start looking a little, they, they look really dingy and really gummed up. And you could tell too that the sole is not breathing. You know, that's, that's a big thing because your foot does sweat a lot. Think about it when you, when you slap rubber on there, especially when you glue it on there, th that sweat doesn't have anywhere to escape, you know, throughout the day. And so that, that's another thing that I like about the leather soles is it, in my opinion, it allows the, uh, any moisture to wick out from beneath. So you might not notice it, but I think it, I can tell that it's happening. I'm with you, like those Ottawa boots and black Chrome XL, they look so much better without it. I mean, especially, you know, when, when you're walking or when you cross your legs or whatever and it exposes the bottom of the sole, I think the leather just looks so much more organic. It looks just better. <laughs> no, it looks a lot better. Yeah. And, and with the toe taps now, my God, super. And I mean, you and I have talked about this uh, ad nauseum, but like yeah. you have so many pairs, you have 50 pairs of shoes, the yeah. chance of you, the likelihood of you wearing out all these leather soles right it's not happening and if it's they do happen. you'll get them resold but i really doubt you're going to need a resole for a very very long time right unless you're wearing one boot consistently yeah that's true it's not going to happen unless unless i really like dedicate a lot of time towards one pair of boots which i don't see happening anytime soon i might, right. I might do it one day but we'll see i mean it's it's not out of the question but I, especially having all these new ones now, I really want to give them love that they deserve. And uh, so I've kind of put, put a lot of my stuff into a uh, limbo mode right now while I focus on the new stuff. Cobbler Sony said something interesting too on, in your last video. He was yeah. like, you were, he was removing your, your, your toppies or topies, however they're pronounced, the rubber. And yeah. then he was removing the glue and then he was putting on the Triumph or Lulus, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, which is the other version of the toe taps. Yeah. Um, and he was saying that the folks that have leather soles, the shoe actually doesn't smell. It kind of just smells like leather. Whereas right. the ones that are rubbery, yeah. they tend to smell. And it was very interesting because, right, the, the sweat, the moisture has nowhere to go and it just sits there and it, it starts, you know, it smells right. like a sweaty gym shirt that's, yeah. you know, that isn't allowed to dry out. Yeah, it's true. That's initially why I got into these uh, shoe trees, you know, because they, they help draw some of that moisture out but um but at the same time the leather wicks moisture because all leather is is it's just a bunch of condensed fibers if you think about it um and things pass through the leather you know so like if you were to drench this in water like the water would just evaporate out or or similar to how you uh when when people use a stretching solution before they stretch their shoes all it is is water and alcohol and that stretching solution. You can, believe it or not, you could dump a whole bottle of vodka in, the, in this boot and tomorrow it, it would be fine. <laughs> like <laughs> all of it evaporates out. Like a lot of people think that you can damage leather easily and, and you can by physically damaging it and things like that. Or if you use like a really abrasive chemical on it, but for the most part, like what things like water it does not, it does nothing. Like it, it hits it and sure it soaks in for a, for a minute, but eventually it's going to wick out. Um, it'll leave no trace behind. So, so that's, that's one thing that's, that's amazing about leather is it's not so much a solid surface. It's more of like a, uh, it, it's, it's a surface through which liquids and things can pass through. And so same thing with the leather sole. Um, that's, and hold that boot up, hold that boot up because what's interesting about that boot, correct me if I'm wrong, isn't that your first Grant Stone, uh, makeup that you got from them yeah. that you bought? Yes, it is. And it looks in pretty damn good condition. And I yeah. know you're, you're the type of wearer that just likes putting them through the ringer. Oh. Um, besides the great, the great patina on it. Um, right. 
I mean, they don't even look worn. Let me see the rubber on the back. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can't okay. even – it doesn't even look worn. Right. There's barely right. anything there, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is this is still one of my favorite pairs of Grant Stones. Yeah, man, Dude, if you're perfect. getting a Grant Stone, that is the – that that or the – what is it, the Battle Assey? That's the first one. You, if you're just looking for a beige neutral – natural chromix whatever something light yeah and that's gonna that's gonna age beautifully and gracefully you get that one or the uh the saddle tan is what it's called yeah the saddle tan veg yes yes i gotta get that yeah but by the way i'm still eyeing those oh my god because i i have I might just buy them tonight after this you, you, you you're motivating me i'll just buy them <laughs> send them to sunny might as well just send them ship them straight to sunny <laughs> well that's yeah. what i did if you hear the doorbell ring i was telling you before that's uh, oh, yeah. Sonny's shipping his boots to me so pardon pardon if i if i step to to get ups uh oh buzz them in by all means <laughs> sunny is the man <laughs> um you, you you were telling me a, a couple weeks ago and you've actually you've done this and you're i haven't said this to you personally but you've ruined my financial life you're like, you know what? Like, I have all these brown boots. They all look good. I got the veg tan. I got the Chrome XL. I have like the cooler kudus. But like now I want stuff that's a little more rare. Yeah. So I want to get into the shells and um, and all those makeups. And yeah. you sent them to me. And now I've also gotten on that train as well. Right. I've gotten this from Grant Stone, uh, the uh, Edward, which might be their, I'd argue that it's their most beautiful boot in terms of just like very clean lines in shell. I have this in the, what is it? The Maduro that's coming. Yes. Very, so yeah, talk Maduro. to me about, talk to me about what your obsession with shell is. Yeah. And, I mean, and, and, and why you like it and, and tell me, you know, what makes it so appealing? Why is it so rare? You know, tell us everything about it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, I, I could probably go on for days about shell. I mean, and by the way, that, that pair that you got those Edwards, Oh my God, that's a grail pair right there. That is a grail. Yeah pair of edward boots <laughs> yeah Next this is still yeah and i put on the uh again you're the inspiration i think uh what's his name shoe nabler on instagram yeah. is really really great with his lace pairings um yeah. so i got the i got the whiskey i don't know if you can see it i uh, yeah. i got the whiskey laces with them so they look they look clean they look amazing with those whiskey laces holy crap yeah i have the, i have brown cotton corded laces in mind but those are those are sharp i might end up swapping them out for something like that um yeah but yeah shell cordovan i mean that's that was the first leather i really ever paid attention to um because it just has such a lore behind it you know it's it's such a celebrated leather uh, and even people that don't know much about leather they've heard of it in most cases and in fact the, my first piece of shell was a uh, nato strap for my panerai it was a color eight. I didn't even, I didn't know what I was doing, but I, I bought this thing from uh, DeLuca Straps. Yeah, I bought from DeLuca. It's so funny. Oh, okay, cool. A, a NATO too. It was like 200 bucks. Yes. <laughs> They're not more, cheap. I think. They're yeah. not cheap. Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. So you have the, you have a shell cord of a NATO strap from DeLuca? I used to, I used to, when I, when I, uh, when I first got into watches, I, uh, it's the same thing with any hobby, right? I mean, yeah. I guess this tees up a lot of our conversation. It's like you get into something, you start buying, pardon my French, shit. Right. And you don't, and then you like realize either it doesn't go together or you don't like it and then you slowly iterate. So I ended up yeah. selling the strap. Uh, now I have another guy on Instagram that I use, Vel Alexander, who I've sent you uh, some good stuff. V-E-L-L-E -L -L -E Alexander. Um, follow right. him on, on, on Instagram. I, he makes custom straps just like, to, to, to fit you know yeah. made to order just like incredible so I'll, yeah. I'll send it over later i think you've seen a photo but yeah yeah you, you've sent me some of his stuff yeah that, that is some excellent stuff yeah he does he does amazing work and uh yeah especially if you're doing made to order you can't beat that but yeah like my journey with shell has been you know it's it's been kind of tumultuous because i want all the rare stuff you know what i mean like it, it's it's such a tease it's like you see it on instagram you see the whiskeys the ravellos the color fours the color twos the amaretto and uh but really the, the only shell you can really easily get your hands on is the color eight and the black shell cordovan so um that's why i'm so thankful that grant stone's doing rare shell like that maduro oh my god that like i've been waiting my entire boot collecting career to get my hands on something like that so i'm, I'm very stoked about that it's really cool because it patinas differently from chrome xl like chrome xl it forms creases like I, I, it probably is not going to show up in this 
so you can see the rolls here, but it, it also forms like deeper creases, fine creases every time you, you wear them, as well as uh, the, the pull-up allows, the pull-up creates a lot of... Um, Those imperfections. Yeah, imperfections. Uh, it really shows its wear easily, whereas shell does not. Shell forms rolls, but it rolls, doesn't form yeah. creases. Like, it like, creases. Because it's, it's, very, it's very tight, right? Yeah, Overall, exactly. In terms of a hide? Yes, exactly. In fact, it's technically not even a leather. Technically, it's a membrane. Right, it's a membrane. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I like to think of it more as a muscle. It's the muscle that causes the horse's uh, butt to twitch when there's, um, when there's flies on it. <laughs> When, it, when it's getting the flies, like that twitch that its butt does, that's from the, the, mem the membrane of shell quarterman. So it's more of a muscle, if you want to think of it like that. And, and it really is. So, so like standard leather is kind of like, think of, think of like, I don't know, beef jerky. Whereas shell quarterman, it's like, it's perfect because it's, it's very opulent and shiny and it's, it's the most non-porous leather in the world. But it's, it's also got like sort of a translucence to it that's hard to describe, but it does. Right like you could almost see through it in a, in a lot or see down into the depths of it if that makes sense right <laughs> and it maintains its sheen right for the most part yeah. unless you like you know r remove some of that glaze that, that's yeah. normally added to the leather right that's true and but that that sheen is also easy to restore very easy to restore with right. a, a number of products so <laughs> now 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 here is ravello and whiskey and you know whatever all these names are <laughs> Mm -hmm. Are they actually rare or are we just getting played as fools? That's a right? great question. I, I don't mean to call out, you know, Alden, but like right. there's right. no way that it should take four years to get any shoe, let alone shell. Right. Like I understand, I understand, you know, there's not as much of it and you need, you know, a lot of horses, whatever. But yeah. like, come on, what's the difference between color eight and then whiskey? Isn't it just the dye? What, what am I missing here? Yeah, exactly. Well, a money grab? Yeah, I mean, it could be. Yeah, I mean, the <laughs> the way that it was described to me was, you know, like your pair of natural shell right there. So the, the horrorwing tannery isn't going to just take any horse hide or any shell cordovan sample and turn that into natural because it's going to have a lot of abrasions in it, a lot of scarring, a lot of blemishes. So for that reason, I want to say like, and this is the way that it was explained to me, like most of the hide has those imperfections, so they won't dye it a lighter color. Most hides uh, have, have so much scarring and, and other things going on that they don't want to show that in the final product. So they dye it black or they dye it really dark burgundy color eight. That's, that's mm. the story as it's been told to me. So the Ravellos, the light colors, the, the tobacco, the natural, the whiskey, those lighter colors are more rare because the, the hide has to be absolutely flawless. Now, but I'm with you though, like with the cigar, cigar is just as dark as color eight. So yeah. I'm with you. Like, wouldn't it just be a matter of swapping the dye? <laughs> yeah. And what about like color four? Color four is like right in between. Yeah. Right. It's a little lighter, but not too dark. Right. I mean, right. you don't see that as often. At least I don't. That's true. I don't. I don't see it as often. And same with color two. It's like color two is all is very like a, a more of a red cherry color. Um, mm -hmm. Color four is also like a cherry color. It's it's all along a gradient. It's all along a a, a continuum a spectrum. Right. Yes, spectrum exactly. I think I read something recently that color two and color four, color eight, they're all just different iterations of one another. They're just uh, different concentrations of the same thing, if I remember correctly. So but ultimately, like, yeah, I, I want the rare stuff. Like, I've been collecting this stuff for so long, and and I want to say about a year and a half, I got on some lists to you know, like rare shell lists. The um, Schumart. Yeah, the Schumart got on that one. In a couple other ones, but I haven't received a dang email. Like, <laughs> not a dang, you know, I, I heard that it would, you know, for my size, a pretty common size, a size eight and a half. Apparently, that that could take a while since it's such a, it's a popular size. Yeah, it's a popular size. And yeah, so, seven and a half until like 10 is going to be where you, where you get most people. Right, right, exactly. So it, it might be a while before I see any of that stuff from Alden. So. <laughs> All right. Well, Grant Stone is putting out from from my from, from what I've seen, they'll do a couple drops of the same leathers, but a new shell every three to six months. I guess get everybody mm -hmm. to save their money. Yeah. And drop another 
another sh- another shell makeup. Right, right, exactly. Which I'm stoked about. And like I told Wyatt during our our meeting, like I had to thank him because if it weren't for him, I wouldn't have any rare shell. Well, I do have that pair of natural shell Vibergs, which also came out the same exact time that Grantstone did. So my theory is, and this is just my theory based off of watching the different makeups and the different drops over the over the months and over the years. It looked it looked like I think Horween had a surge of natural shell at one point because they were able to stock up Grantstone and they were able to stock up Viberg. But then uh, but then Grantstone later announced so Grantstone initially announced the Ottawa boot in natural shell. And then like two weeks later they're like, by the way, here's an Edward boot in natural shell. So they must have And the penny and the penny lover. And, and the penny. Right. Exactly. Which I'm wearing right now to break in. Right, which you are wearing absolutely. So <laughs> So my my thoughts are that Horween just had a surge of the natural shell, like just a surge. And um, same thing with the dark brown shell. Alden calls it cigar. Um, I think Grandstone called it uh, Maduro. 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 I think Viberg called it mahogany or mm, no, Calavados maybe. It, they they had a different name for it. But um, but yeah, my my theory just by watching this stuff is it looks like Horween kind of has surges if you will batch surges of specific colored shells <laughs> and it's like oh we have a bunch here everybody who's interested you know grant stone alden viberg you know have at it That's just so why is theory. so what so so in terms of horween fine we all know horween is it's probably the, the the oldest tannery not the only one in the u.s but the the oldest yeah so they're famous for their shell then you have what is it am i pronouncing it? Shinky? Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. What are they? Japanese? It's Japanese leather. Yeah, it's no? a Japanese tanner or Italian. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so shoe- I don't hear about any other uh, any other shoe companies that are using shell other than like Horween or Shinky. Maybe just because I'm not I'm not seeing it. Yeah, that that's a great question. I know that um, there's the Rocado Tannery in Italy that produces. Oh shell yes. Tannery. Yes. Yeah, there's a uh, there's another one. Oh, I can't remember the name. But yeah, Shinki Haikaku, that's that's a big one nowadays. Oh, I can't remember. There's another one in Italy, I think, that produces shell. I just can't remember the name. So, oh, it starts with an M, doesn't it? Or no? Uh, maybe. Well, Merriam Tannery, they produce... Oh, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, they, they produce horse rope, but they don't produce... Uh, I haven't seen them produce shell yet. There's a few different makers of shell. A, a lot of people prefer the Horween. Um, I think they're all just different. I don't, I don't know that one is necessarily better than the other. Like, I really like my Shinki Haikaku whiskey shell that I got from Mark Albert. Those are breaking in wonderfully. I mean, so cool. It, like so many highs and lows of like oranges and yellows all throughout that makeup. It's, it's really nice. And, and Jake actually, uh, almost vintage style. He really likes the Shinky Haikaku tannery. He has a jacket made out of deer skin from there actually. So kind of cool, but I think they all produce just different stuff. And it, it's, it's a good question. I, I saw Mark Albert actually they sourced their first shell from Shinky Haikaku. And then the second one, I think they did get from the Rocado tannery in Italy. Long story short, different makers source from different tanneries. Alden predominantly sources from Horween. I think they have like just a very strong relationship. Relationship? Yeah. 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 So, but um, I've seen other makers like Viberg Truman. They go all over the world. They're like, yep, Merriam, sign me up. Uh, Shinky, sign me up. You know, they... Charles F. Stead, I think, is probably one of the biggest. Both of them are always getting Charles F. Stead leathers. In fact, uh, Andrew at Parkhurst, he just did that Ray's reverse waxed mohawk. and that, Like the brown leather, right? Yeah. And, and that leather is the only one of its kind. And he worked that out, you know, personally between him and Stead and the tannery. So I thought that was really neat. So... It, it all comes down to, I yeah. think... I love that boot. I love that boot that you have from Parkhurst. Everything about it, like, I, I really love the fuzziness, you know, on the in the character of it. It's it's just fantastic. And the last, it's it's really, really comfortable last, too. But it, ultimately, I think it comes down to the makers and their relationship with the different tanneries, if that makes sense. So, so is Truman going to put out some shell? Like, I know you have a, a, some sort of relationship and you talk to them. What's going on? I, I They have awesome leathers right? Yeah. The kudus, you know, all sorts of cool stuff that they drop. Right. I haven't seen any, I haven't seen any leather 
Mm -hmm. uh, I, I understand that they're sort of work, what's the word, workwear sort of vibe, uh, mm -hmm. the service boot, but they mm -hmm. don't have anything on leather and they don't have any shell. Right, right. That's that's a good point. Um, they did run some shell over the years. I've seen the makeups pop up on Reddit from time to time. And, and I do remember a time when Truman ran a wine. I don't know if you remember this, the wine shell cordovan. I think that was Horween's color eight. I Is think. that the marble? No, it's not the marble. Right? It wasn't marbled. No, it was, um, they called it wine, but it was a, it was a, a burgundy. It was almost a purplish burgundy. If, if I remember correctly, it could have been color eight, but it could have been something different. But I, I'm pretty sure that was from Horween. You know, shell is one of those things. It's like, it's hard to get your hands on it. And it's, it's kind of like Alden already has such a strong foothold on the shell market. So, right. and it's double the amount of money generally. It's right? the amount it's, of money. What yeah. was it at a, a normal boot from Alden? Let's call it like high fives, right? Mid fives. And then if you get shell, it's like, say, you know, closer to 800, sometimes 900. Mm -hmm. depending on you know the whiskey is going to be more than that yeah you're you're looking at eight hundred dollars now Viberg is 12 1300 bucks i don't even know if they have tax yeah. i don't even put in my cart because i'm scared that is very scary when you're ordering a, a boot at that at that price point <laughs> i think a thousand is my cutoff by the way not yeah. not not that anybody's listening to this video but uh right, right. like the makers themselves but uh, you know i'm not paying more than a thousand dollars for a shoe and even then, that that's like my that has to be grail. It has to be I've wanted right. it. Uh, I think that's what Grand Stone is so good at. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think the what were the Edwards? The Edwards were six fifty ish, yeah. right? All in. That's still you know that's a higher end boot cost. Um, right. But right. I think that's a fair price point for Shell. That's a hell of a price. Comparatively, oh, God, two hundred yeah. bucks less than than what Alden charges, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It is, it, it, that is a hell of a price. Um, that's why when, when they released the Ottawa's in honey glazed, I didn't even think. And then when they dropped the Edward a couple of weeks later, again, I didn't even think I'm like, give me those things. Yep. Absolutely. Put my name down. Did you get the Maduro's? You got the Maduro's. Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. We're about a month in, right. In terms of when they dropped. So we have, cause I put, a, I put an order a couple of days after you, I think. Yeah. Um, you 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 actually told me you bought them, and I was thinking on it. And I was like, you know what? Screw it. Bought bought them. So we have another two months. But after and by the way, that's I ordered that without getting this yet because I got this. This is my one of the most recent ones. I got it this. I got it in September, so it's October. So I got it, you know, a couple weeks ago. Uh, right. And I was like, all right, I made the right decision because sometimes you order stuff. Yeah. Whether it's a shoe or a shirt or whatever, and you're like, oh, I shouldn't have ordered it. This right. is one of those orders where you're like, I'll yeah. take this. Why? I know you're going to watch this video. Yeah. <laughs> we'll buy it every time. So drop it. I told him that. I'm like, whenever you run a rare shell, like you can just assume that you have at least one order right here. <laughs> so. I want, I want a, uh, I want a, I don't think he'll do it. Uh, but yeah. I would love a, a, a shell diesel. Yes. I, would, I don't know. I know it's more on the servicey side. It's a little uh, less, uh, it's more casual. Right. I don't know. I think in terms of like the design, I mean, this is probably my favorite makeup so overall. Yeah. It's so I good. love it. I love the damn backstage. I just love it all. The whole thing. Yeah. yeah. All of it. It's, it's all just amazing. Yeah. And I mean, really the only difference between the diesel and the Edward it, are the eyelets. Um, so on the, the back, what's right. that? the panels on the back. It's oh, um, right uh, on the on the on the Edward, right? We're talking about. Yeah, yeah, Edward. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yes. So yeah, you have the heel counter here that's stitched differently. It's it's an extra piece. Yeah, you're right about that. Yeah, the back strip on the Edwards is just a straight up. So and it gives up. you just like a cleaner, cleaner, more. Um, I guess more formal. I'd say it's on rubber. So back to our original. You know, I don't know how formal you could put something on rubber, but. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> That's true. I'll take it on leather too, by the way, Wyatt. Put oh, that yeah. on the list. Give me that word on leather. It, yeah. You know, low volume. The risk is low. Right, right. absolutely. <laughs> and like you said, he wanted to put all their makeups on leather. You know, right. he was kind of due to demand for a rubber sole. That's why they have rubber now, but he wanted to put them all originally on leather. So I think that's a good segue into, into that. So I was actually talking to uh, one of the Alden shops here in, in New York City. And I was on the site and I was like, you know what? I just want to blow like some money. Um, 
And I was telling you this, I'm going through it. Everything is on commando. And personally, I don't love it. There's, I don't think there's a midsole on the commandos, right? On certain makeups, uh, on, no. on, on the Aldens. And what I've seen, I've seen them on yours. I've seen them on a couple other people. They sort of like, it's a very thin p- piece of rubber. And eventually yeah. it either starts like compressing and yeah. you start seeing it from like the side of the boot a little bit when, when it's down or it starts peeling up where the stitching is. The whole right. thing to me is unappealing. So my question is, why is rubber so popular? Yeah, good question. Good question. It, it just has a better reputation. People think, oh, I could wear this stuff in the rain. It's not, it's not going to matter. I could get it wet. It has more of a rugged reputation in terms of like, oh, I could take these things hiking. I could walk on rocks. I could walk on anything and n- nothing is going to damage the sole because it's rubber and you know, yada, yada, yada. My first pair of Aldens was a pair of Color 8 Grant lasted cap toe boots on it was on the dressier commando sole it wasn't on a lug commando sole it was and, on black right it was the black one right yeah or yeah no? it, and then you got it you you had an antique by uh sunny yeah yeah oh. I, I think i did yes yes exactly the the bottom layer of the leather sole started to separate on there and i, I wasn't too you know i wasn't too happy about that so i don't know why that is but um i think just a lot of people they just have this bias towards favoring the rubber. They, they really do. Most people do. The first thing, even people that don't know shoes, the first thing they say about leather is, oh, you can't wear that in the rain. <laughs> they all Yeah. Say- and then they'll say like the salt destroys it. They'll, you know, I don't know. Look, there might be some validity to this, but here's my counter to that. And yeah. this is, could just me be me projecting. Mm-hmm. If you're spending, let's call it four or five, $600, I know you're, you're an anomaly. you like, you'll go like, I don't know where you went on your recent vacation in California. You went to like Death Valley or whatever with these yeah. shoes and just like putting them through the ringer. But like, I don't do that. So, yeah. and right. I think most people fall closer to me than they do to you. They do. Um, so, I, yeah. I, I, so what are these people doing with their damn shoes where they need, where they're like, I want to, you know, do all these things. That's a great question. I don't know. It just comes down to personal preference you know my whole thing with wanting to take those uh those edwards those natural shell edwards on vacation was i really wanted to see how far i could push the shell and in a in a recent video with phil at ashland leather he got his natural shell plain toe vibrant boots with the express purpose he wanted to get the boot that would show the most wear over time he really wanted to take it from this pristine brand new who said this uh, Phil at Ashland Leather. Oh, Phil. Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, he, he said this, uh, that he wanted the one that would have the, the longest patina journey, is I think how he said it. So taking them on, on my trip, that was kind of my way of expediting that patina process, we'll say. Because <laughs> I got them all dirty. I took them on hikes. I, they scraped up against rocks. I washed them off in a river. You know, I was not gentle to them. But but at the same time, I know that they could take it and I know that they're still going to look good. So I, I kind of want And they do to, look good. Yeah, they still look great. Yeah, oh, 100%. In fact, I think they look even a little bit better since, you know, getting them all beat up. Well, that's up. your philosophy. The more, the more you patina, beat it up, take it on a journey, the story it tells, the more you, you enjoy it. Right, right, exactly, exactly. It becomes Whereas me, I get a scratch and I, uh, I panic. I like want to sell it and buy another one. <laughs> I've gotten better at that though. No, I've gotten a lot better. Especially as you move higher end, you know, it tends to the boot is, I don't know, it's just better. Yeah. You can take it. Right, right. It can. It can. You do have a point though. There is a right way to go about the patina process. I might have pushed the envelope a little bit with going to Death Valley and hiking in my natural. Oh, it was Death Valley. I was just joking. Oh, it was yeah, it was Death Valley. It, it was a oh, lot. Okay. Of, yeah. It looked like somewhere I didn't want to be. <laughs> You brought your kids there? Yeah, yeah. It was extremely hot. Oh, my God. <laughs> but it was cool. The, 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 I bet. The place we stayed had a natural spring pool, believe it or not. It was a pool fed by natural spring water. It wasn't treated at all. Crazy. Out in the middle. So were they recording you while you were walking with those shoes? Uh, um, oh, no, no. Um, I, I recorded myself. <laughs> okay. I'm just wondering. If yeah, that's no. why you brought them to Death Valley. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> putting patina on your on your boots. Hey, everybody, come with me. I need to, <laughs> I need to do a YouTube video on my boots. <laughs> Let's go to Death Valley. <laughs> no, no, it was it was legitimately we needed a break. You know the COVID thing, like like you're talking about. Like 
we just had such bad cabin fever and I just wanted to get out and see nature and I wanted no, to hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, that was the main goal. Um, yeah, of course the secondary goal was doing the cool YouTube video, but by the way, I have a, I have a rule and I haven't told you this yet. My, my yep. new rule is going to be, I think I'm going to stick to leather. Okay. As general point, if it's on, if it's shell. Yeah. And the option is I have to put it on, you know, for example, like the Maduro or the honey, uh, the glaze honey, yeah. on micro stud, I will buy it. But I have a, a preference for leather and mm -hmm. then throw on some, some taps. Yes. Um, that, that, I think that's what I'm going to do from now on. And that's why I think I'm going to go with uh, the uh, Battle Assey tonight. I'm going to order them. That is such a I don't want player. I don't want him on Neo Cork and I don't I don't you know I don't want uh it on Commando from oh, all right. the and I gotcha. I gotcha. That makes sense. No, I'm I'm with you. That that Carlo Battalassi, oh my god, it's so nice. That's an Italian naturally veg vegetable tanned leather, and that's really gonna show its wear. I mean, it's gonna patina dramatically differently compared to Chrome Excel does. Chrome Excel almost, I don't want to say it has a boring, it, it, definitely not a boring patina process, but it's just different from that natural veg tan calf skin. That stuff, like like I have that same leather in, in the Grantstone Derbies, and it has just patinaed oh, right. wonderfully. I mean, and that's the reason that I don't get those diesels in in the natural tan veg Battalassie is because I already have them in a Derby. But trust me, it's still it still haunts my dreams to a point. I still kind of still want them anyways, but <laughs> you know what? Once I get them and take a photo, when cobbler Sonny sends them back, you're going to, yeah. you're going to buy them. Yeah. I probably like, wow. That's, that's dope. <laughs> I'm going to so, keep. Yeah, exactly. So I've noticed that I've noticed that most of your, the, your recent boots. And I think over the last 10, all of them are good. You're welted. So what's the deal? Yeah. Is it a preference or is it availability? And um, if it's none of those, what is your preference? Yeah, that's a great question, actually. Um, yeah, so for the most part, it is, for the most part, it does come down to availability. But even if I did have the choice between Stitch Down and, and Goodyear Welt, I'd still probably go for the Goodyear Welt. I just like the look of the Goodyear Welt better. I know it's a, it's a personal thing, and a lot of people say that Goodyear Welt is ugly uh, uh, and that they prefer the Stitch Down. And I'm like, what are you talking about? This is beautiful. This is... It's so clean. Ugly how? Ugly how? I don't know. They don't explain themselves. They just say, oh, good. But stitch down, down, normally it's like double stitched. And yeah. sometimes the stitching, and most times, it's not uniform. That's true. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people prefer the stitch down. It's an aesthetic preference. And most people that voice their opinion on it are like, yeah, I like the stitch down. You know, White's does it. Nick's does it. Truman used to do it. Viberg does it. There is debate as to which one's easier to do too, oddly enough. Like Truman charges an extra hundred, hundred at least an extra hundred dollars to do stitch down compared to Goodyear Welt. But ultimately I think it's how your your factory is set up because other places are the completely opposite. Like they charge more for Goodyear Welt compared to stitch down. And I'm like, well, which one is it? And and I've also it's been my assessment that the stitch down's harder to resole, but then Well, you don't get as many resoles because you're going through the actual upper. Right, right. If, I'm, if I'm understanding correctly. Yeah. So you're putting the needle in, fine. You, you resole it, you put it in again, fine. The hole's bigger. Yeah. There's only so much leather that you can put the needle through before it starts to not look good, A, eh? and to yeah. tear. Right. Whereas right. Goodyear, well, I've seen, I've seen, I've been watching a lot of, I sent you a link before for Potters and Sons. Um, Let's look them up, yeah. Th those guys are based, uh, they're based, I think, in Nashville, Tennessee. I think they're from Georgia. But anyway. Okay, right. I've seen them. I've seen Goodyear welted shoes where the welt is completely done and even some of the upper is screwed up and they're still able to, you know, put in like another piece of material in order to uh, reinforce and then make another welt and the shoe looks brand new. Right. I can't imagine the same would be with, uh, with stitch down. Yeah. With the stitch down. No, it's probably harder. I think it probably is harder. And that's my impression. It's more difficult to resole like you're right. saying. Um, so, but, but, but my pushback, and again, is like the people that are spending, so like if you have a vibrant boot, you spent six, 700 bucks for like a normal makeup. Yeah. Which means a lot of these guys, right. Tend to have more than one. So like how many times are you resoling this thing anyway? 
Yeah, you're not. <laughs> At that point, you're going to sell it in 10 years because you've changed your tastes. So right. Right. it's exactly. inconsequential is my view. That's, I think it's more of an aesthetic preference than like, I think a lot of the people in the boot community, and I think this is the theme of our conversation is like all these theoreticals. Yeah. Because I think a lot of boot collecting and a, a lot of hobbies in general, they're aspirational. Yes. It's more about how you view yourself in the hobby. So like, you'll be like, oh, I can't wear leather because it's like, it's rainy here in New York and they put salt down and I'm going to slip on the subway. And it's like, yeah, you're walking to work on the sidewalk, bro. Right. <laughs> you're, not, you're not doing anything else. No, true. So a, a lot of it just comes down to the stories that we tell ourselves in terms of preference. hundred percent. And I've always said, you know, it's kind of like the, uh, the gateway drug, the Goodyear welted boot is your gateway drug. How do, how do they get you hooked? Well, they tell you it can be resold as many times as you need. And you know so, who says that? Who's that company? Yeah. We both know it. We say it. I'll that. say it. We'll, count to this. we'll count to three at the same time and we'll say the company. Okay. All right. One, one, one two. two, three, J. Crew. Right. <laughs> it's on their damn site. Yes. I'll get like some cheap boot in Leon, Mexico and be like, oh, it's going to be resold 10 times. That's 100% what they say. And, and a lot of makers say that. You know what I mean? It's the way to justify your entry into it. So it's like, okay, well, I'll buy these and that'll be the only pair of boots that I need. And then you buy them and you realize, holy crap, these fit good. Holy crap, they look good. Holy crap, my life is actually better with these things. I'm going to get another pair. And then what, uh, two pairs turns into 10, turns into 20, you know, and then soon enough, you have so many boots that you'll literally never wear through them in your whole life. In fact, like when I, when I used to collect Clarks, I was big into Clarks for a while. And uh, the desert boot is beautiful. Yeah, for sure. That's a Blake stitch though. No, I think it is. I, I wore some of those pairs for years and they didn't wear down. You know what I mean? Like the sole on those, the rubber sole, the crepe, those didn't, those didn't wear down at all. So, so what's going on here? Like what? <laughs> So it's not so much about the life of it. I want just the best possible boot that I can get. That's the, sure. To me, Agreed. that's what I want. Yeah. Yeah. The best looking, the best quality, the best fitting. That's what I want now. It's not so much about, oh, I could get a $90 pair of shoes that'll last me 10 years. Okay, great. Do you love them though? If it, right. If the point is not to say, I tell you this all the time, especially when you're working remotely is like, for the most part, we're not spending as much money on the BS, the alcohol, the eating out. I mean, I do because I'm addicted to seamless. But uh, right. other than that, like most of us are not doing that. Yeah. So the goal isn't to collect, to save as much money as you can and then, you know, skimp out on, at least that's my philosophy. I rather buy, you know, if I'm going to spend money, I want to get the best looking, the best thing. Yeah. That's just me. Right, exactly. The way I see it is it's kind of like picking your house. You know, you want to live in a comfortable house. You want to live in the best house you can because it, enhances the quality of your life. Well, it's the same thing with your clothes. You live in your clothes too. And so I see a lot of people, a lot of really successful people, they have a great looking house, great car, and but their clothes are like super cheap and but and they don't even think twice about them. It's like, okay, well, you put all this thought and energy and effort into your house. You put all this thought and effort and energy into your car, but you're wearing, you know, super cheap shoes that were printed out of a factory for pennies. And it's like, yeah, I want my house to be nice, but ultimately I'm in my clothes more than I'm in my house even. I'm definitely in my boots more than I'm in my car. So I want my boots to be something that I actually love. Like no shit, like lights my soul on fire with right. <laughs> love. Right. <laughs> so. And when you say cheap, I, and I just want to make it clear, you don't mean cheap in yeah. terms of like someone spending a lot of money or not. It's more about, do they actually, did they put thought into what they're buying? And does it right. fit them? And is there, right, is there some beauty in it? Exactly. Right? Exactly. I was reading an article in terms of like the people that are, so I subscribe to uh, like minimalism, right? If you come to my apartment, you'll notice I don't really have so much stuff in general. Yeah. Right? I was going to uh, ask what all that is on your wall, but there's nothing's there. So <laughs> nothing's here. I like negative space, right? I have a couple things. I have uh, you know, I won't give you the tour cause I have stuff around here, but I've like okay. a photo on the wall. I got some, some cacti. Um, nice. But, but what I was saying was it, I was reading an article and in terms of the people that subscribe to minimalism, some people are like, I just want as little as possible, but they don't think about that beauty has its place. And one of the analogies I read is like, why are flowers beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. To attract the bees in order to pollinate and right. Why do we, you know, why procreation and all that. 
it, yeah. it's all associated with some level of beauty and the same could be applied with the stuff that we own, whether it's a boot, whether it's a, a painting, whether it's a plant. I, I think there's something really um, important and uh, indigenous to all of that. Absolutely. It's, it's very intrinsic. I mean, aesthetics capture you, you know what I mean? And for me, the first time I saw a pair of Aldens, it was like, there was something about it. I just couldn't stop looking at them or thinking about them like and ultimately what it really was was, was the sole was the stacked leather sole like that yeah it's clean it's yeah it, it just it looks real it, it looked like the first real boot i ever saw in my life like made by a real person with real stuff you know this wasn't uh mass manufactured out of a factory you know for for pennies this was like somebody wanted to make the best possible rendition of a boot that they could and so that's what got me hooked was like you could feel how much love was put into something i think when you when you hold it when you observe it you could tell if the person gave a crap or not <laughs> when they put it what's together. that japanese term that you you mentioned a couple times on on some of your vi videos is it what wasawabi or something oh, or wasab yeah but i don't think that's it wabi sabi yeah that's it that's it what, there, there, so what is that there's wabi sabi and there's shibui they're all kind of the same thing it's um well, it has to do with putting intention into the things that you surround yourself with so so for example all oh, right that 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 physical goods they actually have a life right there was some tenant that you mentioned yes they have a life they age they they should age gracefully there's there's an there's an enhanced emphasis on yeah, things that age gracefully and that you can use them for a long time. They're simple, but you put intention into the things that you carry with you and you love these things and they're sentimental, but, and you don't have so much of them, what, which I kind of crossed the line on, you know, I'm not so much of a minimal <laughs> minimalist <laughs> as you know, but, um, but yeah, it, it really comes down to intentionally surrounding yourself with things that you want to be surrounded by and removing the clutter, removing the cheap clutter, especially. Um, so, you know, what that essentially means is, you know, don't go to the thrift shop and buy up a bunch of junk that you are never going to use. It's just going to pile up in the corner and look like crap. Don't do that. Instead, like get a teapot, You're right. you know, get that cast iron teapot and brew tea in it every day for 30 years. That's, that's the idea behind uh, Wabi Sabi, you know, and, and as you use your teapot, it, it takes on its own patina um, through use and um, it takes on unique flavors from the different teas that you brew and those flavors get trapped into the iron and they imbue your next pot of tea with, even more unique flavors. You know, it's kind of like the Chicago, mm. the, what, what gives sh Chicago pizza its flavor is all the, all the other pizzas that were baked in. Were in the cast iron. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so it, it, it's kind of like you use something for such a long time that it develops its own unique properties. And uh, that's, that's what Wabi Sabi and Shibui is, you know, a simple but thoughtful take on your possessions, I think. So that, yeah. That, yeah. No, I love that. I love that. Now, yeah, I guess we should have started with this earlier, but I would love to hear what your view is on patina and your definition. And yeah. the second piece to that is I know you're a big fan of on your footwear, but do you <laughs> apply that with the other things that you own? Like I know you're wearing your Panerai now. Oh, do yeah. Do you subscribe to that same school of thought with the patina with a little, you know, you don't want, you don't want to be, it doesn't want to be smashed, but do you appreciate the, you know, the, the, yeah. the age? Yeah, no, that's that's a great question. Yeah, it comes down to uh, really asking what patina is and what it is not. And um, yeah, so like, what isn't it? Yeah, that's that's a good question. I think what it isn't is forcing it to happen. So, for example, um, I watched what was it when they were making the fourth Indiana Jones movie? They took the Alden four hundred fives and they and they uh, distressed them intentionally with some sort of sander and they sanded up his boots. And to me, it didn't quite look, you know, when they were on screen, like it would probably deceive most people like, Oh yeah, those looked like some beat up boots, but I could tell that they were brand new boots that, that were just sanded, you know, mm. you can't really trick people in that way. And that's to me, that's what patina is not is artificially creating it kind of like with jeans too, with denim. Yeah. I was going to say distressed jeans. Like what yeah. is, you know, would you wear that? Right, distressed denim. I mean, I used to. I don't wear them anymore. <laughs> but, okay. But I used to, and um, and I can tell you, after 
after having the raw denim and achieving my own level of fades, now I'm not nearly as crazy as some of these guys. Well, but, and I have a point to make after, by the way, about okay. all this. Okay, yeah, yeah. But, so go but, ahead. Yeah, long story short, um, patina is achieved through, what's the best word? Through candid and honest use. So, for example, my J. Crew stretch denims, they're selvage, they have faded up really nicely. Um, so they started out, they were raw, they were dark, that deep inky uh, indigo blue color. And now, they're, now they're, they're still dark, but they're starting to show their vibrancy, that vibrant indigo, that brilliant bright blue indigo starting to come through now. And to me, that's just so fulfilling. I feel like it's an achievement. You know, I've washed them twice on cold in my washer and I've used them they're the jeans that I wear the most and, I, and I've been wearing them for probably a, over a year now. And to me, that's the most fulfilling thing is actually intentionally, authentically wearing them and getting the fades instead of say buying them already pre-distressed. That's just the cheap way to do it or intentionally distressing them yourself. That's another cheap way to do it. I think use them, take care of them, respect them and let the patina happen. Just let it happen. Don't try to force it. Don't don't try to apply all kinds of different like for your boots. Don't don't try to apply all kinds of you know saturate it and all these different treatments and everything. Most of your boots don't need treated for several years. You know after owning them. So I would say that that what patina really is is honest wearing, not forcing it, not none of these tricks or gimmicks to try to accelerate the patina, but rather really loving them, really using them in your day-to-day -day life and enjoying what happens, you know, like wait and see what happens. So anyways, that, that's what I have to yeah. say about that. I, uh, I, uh, I just had a thought when I was in high school, okay. the ripped jeans were, 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 you know, cause it goes in and out every like three years, two years, ripped jeans come and go. It's one of yeah. those things with denim. And, yeah. um, I would, I went to like American Eagle and I would yeah. buy the denim and then I would take like a scissor, uh -huh. open it and then like rub it. And then something like the first time I did it, I went too far and I ripped the damn pant. Uh -huh. And cause that, I, I don't know what the right terminology is, but you know, the strands, the strings of, of the denim, yeah. right? Once it's all ripped and you can see like the skin, you don't look cool. You look broke. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? Right. And at that, I, I remember thinking to myself, damn, I'm shit out of luck. I just spent like 40, 50 bucks on a pair of jeans from American Eagle and just made a hole in them. Right. And uh, that was the beginning moment of me realizing that if I just wore them and used them, honestly, as you say, yeah, they will, they will look the way I want them to look. Right. right. Of course, you should like them when you buy them. I don't want to you know, yeah. misrepresent the buying of an item for it to look a certain way down the road. You yeah. should buy it and enjoy it and enjoy the entire life cycle right. of exactly. the object. But I do have a problem personally with, you know, the fade culture with denim. Like some of these, dude, some of these jeans look so bad. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? See, I'll see um, like fades in the pocket where someone's wallet is or their phone and yeah. it's completely ripped through and they still have their wallet in there. Like, where did we lose you on this? That's not what you should be doing. And I know it's I'm being I'm being biased, but it looks so yeah. bad on some of these jeans. Oh yeah. <laughs> I wish we could like scroll. Maybe on our next one we can scroll, go through IG without and like blank out the names. Yeah. And just like give some examples because it is it is a sad state. You know what it reminds me of? The Uggs from back yeah. in like from 2008 to like 2000 like 16 or 15, where right. you'd have like the girl who would wear them. And then like the back heel or whatever is worn out and she's walking like, that's what it reminds me of. The same, just like, no, right. stop. Right. I think in Recycle the denim them. world, yeah, the, the denim world is one of those things. I think it's filled with a lot of people that are just really eccentric. And I think there's a lot of neuroticism going on in the denim world too, because, you know, some of this denim is expensive. It's two, $300 and I've messed yeah. up. For myself you know it's expensive so but some people are like nope I made that investment and I'm gonna make this work no matter what the hell I have to do <laughs> what's the deal with wearing it for like a year straight like I'm all about yeah like some people just don't wash them at all right and I'm like I hang dry all my all my denim you know yeah. like I'll wash them on delicate and cold you know every you know once a month every couple weeks you know now I don't wear them at all so whatever right but then that's like some people are not washing them at all 
that yeah. concerns me. That that's true, and and I tried that, and let me tell you what, it, they start to get just kind of nasty. Like like eventually, so much stuff gets into the into the fibers of the denim. You got to wash that yeah. eventually. Yeah, I mean, it's rubbing on your skin, sweat, oil. I mean, it's imagine not changing your bed sheets for for. I don't even want to say more than a month. I'm talking about like months at a time, year. Like, can you imagine yeah. what white sheets would look like after six months? They would be all that tinge of yellow. It's like a white collar shirt. But I learned that during my bar mitzvah, by the way. That was my lesson with white. Really? Right? Because you, you go to the synagogue, you have your button down shirt, and yeah. it's rubbing against your neck. And I would be lazy, like a young teenager, and I'd be like, forget it. I don't need to wash it. It doesn't smell. I wore it for you know, a couple hours. And then right. you do that twice or three times, and then you start realizing that in bright light, it's got this dingy, yellowy look to it because yeah. it's all the, you know, I'm not going to, you know, the oil, the skin, whatever. You got to wash your stuff, man. Yeah, you got to wash it 100%. 100%. Wash your shit. Yeah, humans are very, you know, our skin is not, it, it, our skin is an organ and it's constantly breeding sweat. <laughs> So. Yeah, we're alive. So that's it, my one criticism, right? That's when, so that, I guess that's my point with, uh, yeah. with too much of anything is, is, is not good. And my point in that exaggerated uh, remark, I feel like part of Patina's definition is also balance. Yes. Right? Yes. Right? And I don't, I don't think we touched upon that. It's, it's, it's not too much, not right. too little, very much like the way we should leave, lead most of our lives, which mm -hmm. I find extremely poetic in some way right too. too much of anything is too bad right too much drinking too much eating too much right too much exercise too little I, so I, I i don't know to me it's, right. it's a balance and if you hit that balance you're going to have that beautiful patina not only in your stuff but in your life yes that is 100 percent so well summed up i mean yeah i couldn't have said it better myself i mean you you nailed it there man i mean it's it's so true like like with me with exercise um, you can 100% overdo it. You know, even we're seeing it now with some of these pro athletes, like their hearts are enlarged from all the scar tissue because they do so much cardio every single day that their heart literally becomes filled with scar tissue. And like, I think Lance Armstrong's heart is huge now because of all the cardio he's done in his life. It's like you, too much exercise is bad. Like, like it's bad if you don't exercise, but guess what? It's, it's bad if you do too much. <laughs> So right, same thing. Right, with right. Eating. You can eat too much. You can, um, you can take too many uh, supplements. You know that, that I take a lot of supplements, and I can tell you, you can overdo it with those too. You, you need to. It needs to be in just the right balance to benefit you the most. You know, and it's yeah. the same thing with clothes. It's the same thing with denim. It's the same thing with boots. And yeah, I think the except denim, you have fifty boots. I Not do. to call you out on a recorded uh, video chat, but. Uh... <laughs> I mean, there's no, there's no balance. There's no homeostasis oh, no, in having 50, which is fine. But by the way, but, but in all yeah. fairness though, yeah, the, 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 I think that's okay though. Too much. If everything is precious, then nothing is precious, right? If everything matters, then nothing matters. So you, right. you're not the same way about like, I don't know, your spoons. You know what I mean? Like that's true. You, you'll have, a, you'll have enough and then that's good. And you know, the things that you love, you will, you will collect and have more of. So. I think right. there's a balance there. That, that's a great point. Yeah. The, the reason I still buy boots and I still have more on the way, by the way, uh, is <laughs> because they still captivate me. Like all the new ones. It, it's, it's like, like for me, for example, my bikes, you can't see them, but I have three bikes hanging and I stopped at three bikes. Like I have a, a mountain bike and a road bike and, a, and another road bike. And uh, same with my guitars. Like I'm not super into my guitar hobby. So I have, I have three guitars. That's where I stopped. It's all I need. But with boots, it's like, no, no, I still want more. Like it just all right. it, for some So you're going to set a rule. I wonder if you would have find more value if you, if you, if you set a rule of, I, I know 50 is a lot, but if you had, if you stopped at, at 50 or you had 25, cause there's something like really deliberate because I think to myself and I was telling you this the other day, maybe I didn't say it so explicitly because yeah. I live in a small apartment here in a story in New York, right? You saw my closet. Uh, it's not big at all. They're yeah. all stacked in these plastic uh, boxes, right? With shoe trees. Right. And I always ask myself if I had, you know, I could probably get maybe like max 20 in there, but let's call it, imagine I had 10 boots. Yeah. What makeups would they be? I'd probably get like, like a diesel of some kind, like a service boot. And then the rest, I'd get like all shell. 
Oh, or like cool makeups. I mean, that's what I'm doing now. Right. So I wonder if your hobby would be enhanced if you applied that same philosophy to yourself. A little friction, you know, yeah. in terms of like enjoyment in your life. When it's too easy, it's not enjoyable, right? Mm -hmm. When there's a little friction, that's what really gets you better at something and gets you to enjoy it and appreciate it. And also yeah. artistically, like that, the best pieces of art and expressions of art have come through stories that people face adversity from. So I wonder if, you know, applying that rule to your, to your, to your boot hobby yeah. would actually, although difficult, would have you enjoy it more than you already do. Possibly. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a great point. The best things come out of stress, out of high stress situations, high stress, you know, like the best foods come out of impoverished places. You know what I mean? The best art comes out of, um, times of distress and, and anguish. That's when the best art is produced. And it's, it's true. So that's, that's a good question. And, you know, I covered this, or well, I touched on it in one of my grant stone videos where I talked about if I were starting from scratch, I would right. let's just probably buy every pair of grant stones, like to get started to like be my base models. Cause they have so many good base models, like, like the Dune, uh, diesel. And uh, the crimson chrome XL diesel, the black chrome XL diesel, I'd probably buy up a lot of those plain toe boots and then, and then ask the question, okay, what's, where can I fill in the gaps? But the problem is there's, you can keep creating new gaps and that's where it's the browns. I, it's literally the, like use brown. Yeah. And that is literally the, if we had put, that's exactly the issue you run into now. And I do as yeah. well. Exactly. Exactly. You got the shades, you got the cacto, you got the texture, you got the kudus, you got the different cool leathers, exotic yeah. leathers, I should say. Right. Right. And for me, yeah, those, those, those gaps keep creating themselves. And so it's like, well, I could squeeze another pair in there. Oh, that, there's something else I don't exactly have. Um, I think one account on Instagram that's, that's really good right now is Adam, Adam Grimm. He has the same leathers on different lasts and, and different, you know, like he, he'll change out the eyelets and, and do a cap toe and do a different last with Truman. And then, so he, he has, I think in certain cases, he, he has He's all Truman. Is that right? Yeah. They're, they're mostly all Truman. Um, but he has two, he has so many doubles of leathers. So like, I think he has two pairs of squirrel ramblers. One's on the C55 last plain toe. One is on the, on the P79 last cap toe. And so like me, I don't, I don't go quite that far, but I can see how you could get to that point. Um, because it's like, like I said, the more you collect, the more gaps you see, like, the, like this is brown, but this is a, a light brown. You know, there's darker browns, there's cherry browns, there's cognacs, there's cigars, there's burgundies. There's so many different iterations of brown. And then that's not even touching on other colors like greens. Oh my God. There, did you ever think about how many greens there are? You got um, aqua green, you have like olive green, <laughs> you have. Yeah, no, you got every, every color you can imagine. Yeah. And so that's what happens with my boot collection is, is it's like, you know, when I started, it's like, oh, I just need a black and a brown. That's what everybody tells you, right? And so I got my black and my brown. And then, well, I discovered that there's a thousand shades of brown. So you got to get one of those, yeah. each of one of those. And then uh, once that's done, well, I don't have, I have that, that brown in a, in a plain toe, but I don't have it in a wingtip. So now I need to get the wingtip. <laughs> and you see Right. And then you got the leathers and then you have the rubbers and then you have the composites. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So like, what is your, so like, and again, I know I'm putting you on the spot here. You and I put like some sort of agenda together. Yeah. But yeah. just to be a little provocative. Yeah. Like how many boots do you have on like pre-order or like that you're thinking about buying now? I have to assume it's somewhere between five to eight. Oh, no. Uh, on the way, I only have two on the way. The, the no, but then you're thinking about potential buying. Like. Oh, yeah. Yes. But then. The Grant yeah. Stone that you just mentioned to me, the Battle Assie. That's another one. It's like. <laughs> That's another one that's on my radar. Yeah. And then not to mention, I'm still eyeing those, those Ottawa boots in ivory suede from Grant Stone. But the white yeah, ones, those are cool. Yeah. Those are very nice. Um, I'm looking at a couple more pairs of Truman's chestnut wax flesh, plain toe 79. Fine. So you, so, so you made my point. Here's where I'm going with it. Yeah. <laughs> at some point, dude, you're going to have like 75, 80 boots. Yeah. Like 
you know, you're going to have to get rid of some, no? Like what, yep. what are you going to get like a storage locker? R right. Good question. Uh, I already have that. I have, um, I have some storage containers that have some boots in it that are sort of just in the interim phase. Like I'm, I'm deciding whether or not to sell them. But oh, okay. This is mainly from my guilt years, my, my years buying off guilt. Um, I got a lot of good shoes off guilt, but um, most of them I don't wear right now. So, but that's right. not to say that in the future, like I have one pair of Antonio Maurizis. They're a single monk and they're just beautiful. They're burgundy and they have a burnished, it's a burnished plain toe single monk. I've seen it. Yeah. Oh, you put it on Instagram. No, I've seen it. Yeah. I've, I've had them on Instagram. Yeah. Um, but those are, they're so beautiful. The the problem is, is they're just too sleek. They're built on an Italian last. They're built. Yeah. For they're very European. Yeah. Very European looking. And uh, so they don't fit me that great, but my God, are they beautiful? So, um, so long story short, like I'm keeping them in limbo right now. Like I don't want to sell them because I know that there's going to be a day where I want to put them on. Um, and I'll be regretful if I sell them off. So that's kind of, I have some boots in that phase right now. Um, but, but what I did recently was my Alden 403 Indies. I had those restored and I sent them to my dad because my dad wears the same size. So yeah, like you're right there. I'm going to get to a point to where some of my boots do get phased out. And when that happens, I either sell them or I give them to my dad. Cause you know, my dad, he, if I don't give him good shoes, he'll buy his shoes from big lots. <laughs> so. All right. So you're saving it. Cause yeah. you don't want them in big lots. Yeah. I'm saving I don't know. I, 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 Joshua Fields Milburn, one of my favorite authors, he's one of the minimalists. He has a famous podcast. He has a rule called the 90 day rule. And you okay. can create your own rule, whatever, but his basically rule is with his, with his stuff that he wears. Yeah. If you don't wear it 90 days back and that covers three seasons, you huh. got to let it go. And that's his, that's his way because it's already sunk cost. If you think about it, like there's yeah. no way of recouping the money. And I think a lot of people hold on to things, including shoes, because they're like, uh, you know, I paid, I paid, you know, for these Aldens, I paid, I mean, that's not a good example because they hold their resale value, but whatever. I bought this shoe for, for $900 or $800 or 500 and you know, but it's already sunk cost. Right, right. That makes sense. That makes sense. And I will say it feels good to get rid of the old stuff. Um, in fact, Cobbler Sonny, um, I gave him a pair of my selvage denim that I don't wear anymore because they don't fit me anymore. Um, and he just, he shrunk them down in the dryer and they fit him perfectly. He has like a size 29 waist. <laughs> what was that? The COVID-19 you put on? You had to give yeah. him the pants? Yeah. <laughs> so no, I, I just, I had these, this pair of selvage denim and, and they fit well when I'm standing, but when I would sit, oh my God, it was awful. Oh, were they button flies? The worst freaking pants? That's I should have brought that up during my whole thing. Who came up with that? Talk about being a purist for no, for like, at least leather is comfortable right? Yeah. Like leather shoes, but like button flies, stop. You can't go to the bathroom. They're uncomfortable when you sit. And then when you think you've opened them, there's one more button every time. <laughs> you know, there's always <laughs> another button. Why would I want those? I, 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 I literally will not buy selvage anymore if they have button flies. I've given up. <laughs> Just put a zipper on it. Like, come on, make it easy. Right, right. I barely want to go get up to go to the bathroom as it is now during COVID. <laughs> And my apartment. Now you got to put like, you know, like, what do you call it? Like cones between all this? Right, right. Yeah. The, the, you go well, around? They, they are annoying. You know the reason, well, one of the reasons why they justify that, right? There was a yeah, they charge you $200. Right. $300. <laughs> well, not That's just That's the that. reason. There was a survey done. Apparently, um, these, uh, they asked women the difference, like their preference in appearance between the button fly jeans and the zip jeans. And they, I, I want to say like 80% of the women preferred the look of the button fly. Um, so that's, that's partly but why. But men are different though. And, and men are different. We're built differently. Yeah. The whole, you know what I mean? Right. In terms of like putting on the pants or moving the pants, like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. If you're wearing them once a week, fine. But like there's some, maybe I have to get used to them and I haven't given them a chance. I'm just like being comical. Yeah. But yeah. I just prefer, give me a fly any day of the week. Right, right. I'm with you. It's, it's far more. Imagine being on a plane and you have to, I know no one's on planes now. You're on a train and on top of it, it's shaking and you got to go and open the buttons. <laughs> I'm going to need a scissor to, to use the restroom. Right. Well, and this is, this might be TMI, but I'm actually really good at getting them, undoing them now. <laughs> like I could almost right, undo great. Them as quick as a zipper. <laughs> All right. You can help the people on, on your, on your, on your sub that need help. Yeah. Yeah. And, 
Right. Well, but as as those holes break in, not not the button, not the metal hardware button itself. No, I got you. But the hole, as you wear those, continue to wear them, it's easier to get the button in and out of them because they break yeah, in. Yeah, you know what's also easy? Yeah. A, a zipper. <laughs> a zipper. Good point. Yeah. Touche. Yeah. Touche. No, I'll give you that one. That's that's for sure. Um, All right. You don't have any pigeon tree crafting uh, belts, right? Yet? No, I don't, but they're, they're beautiful. I have a belt from, um, I only have one brown belt from Horween made by Brock Road. Okay. Uh, he, he doesn't, he, I think he used to sell them in, in like a tan, yeah. uh, excuse me, in a natural leather. Um, okay. And I wanted, I wanted it brown. I didn't want to go through, again, I didn't want to go through the patina process. So right. we actually ran into some extra uh, Horween and made me a custom belt. And that's been my brown belt that I use. I don't have another one. Okay, cool. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, well, the, the thing about the, uh, the quick release belt from pigeon tree crafting is kind of like what you're saying. Like when I want to, this again might be TMI, but when I need to go to the bathroom and my bladder is full, the quick release belt is awesome because I don't, because all you do is you push the lever down and the belt pops open. So you don't have to actually with a normal belt yeah, I saw. tighter yeah. to get it at, to get the, and, and, and you're 40, right? You're 40. Yeah, I'm 35. Don't push right. it. <laughs> well, I don't know, man. Once you start, once you start creeping on 40, you know, like exactly. I don't know what bladder problems you're talking about, but I'm younger than you. I don't, you know, maybe I'm not there yet. Right. So, but no, right. but the pigeon tree crafting, I think, is a really nice iteration on, on like the buckle. Yeah, it is. I, and I think what's cool about what he does, what's his name again? Pigeon uh, tree I, crafting. Isaac, I, right? Yeah, Isaac. Yeah. Is. So I feel like sometimes in terms of like design, we do them because they're like heritage and it's the way it ha has always been. Yeah. And he almost flips it on its side and is like, okay, I'm going to keep the basic tenants of the belt, but I'm going to do this. Right. You know, besides like the buckle looking a little bit different. And that's, I think from a design aesthetic more than anything, you can't yeah. really tell that it's like, you know, not a normal belt. Right. Which I right. appreciate. It, me too. When I saw pictures of it, I assumed it was going to be so loud when I was wearing it around. It's not loud. It's actually surprisingly muted for that, for the, you know, that when, when you're looking at it, it looks like a quite an aggressive style, but when you're wearing it, like, no, it's, it's not, it's not loud at all. It's totally, it's totally elegant, even though from the outside looking in, it looks like it would be a quite a bold fashion statement. It's not, it's totally like reasonable to wear that in most all occasions. So yeah, but that's well, what I like about it is the quick release, you know, it's easy on the bladder. Here, so here's what I wanted to ask you, and I think this is a good uh, uh, segue, because yeah. we have to stop talking about your bladder, right. um, <laughs> is, so like, we're all, a lot of us are at home, and um, I haven't put on, honestly, until the fall, mm -hmm. I haven't really put on, like, denim, jeans, chinos, obviously it's really hot here in New York in the summers, it's, it's like subtropical, um, so fine, that makes sense. But even now working from home, I'm not getting ready. So, so like, I still see you take photos of your outfits, your boots, whatever. Yeah. I don't, I haven't, I haven't worn any of these boots. I haven't worn a single boot besides trying it on to make sure like I got, uh, new, new jeans from Everlane, which are dope. Oh, um, yeah. which I was telling you about the, the, the 4% elastane. Oh, and, yeah, Everlane. Wow. Oh, oh man. God, like I, I said this to you before, before we started recording. Yeah. You know, you see your, your partner, your girlfriend, wives put on like pants and they just slide right on. And then us right. men, it's like this whole thing got the button fly, you know, like, oh, it's horrible. You struggle. Comfortable. Yeah. I put on these Everlane ones in the store and I was in the fitting room and I literally did this. Wow. This is incredible. <laughs> they felt like you could sleep in them. You could sleep in them. So I decided I'd get, uh, uh, you know, a couple pairs, then I got another one and another one si similar to what we do with our, our boots. Uh, right. So I could rotate. But anyway, the last time I tried a boot on is only when I was trying on those jeans. And it's like, I feel like this hobby is so great. Yeah. It's more aspirational than it was before because I buy these damn boots and I don't even put them on. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm wearing my shell Cordovan uh, uh, penny loafers with mm -hmm. like mesh shorts right now. I'm not going to stand up because I'm, you know, I have right i'd be embarrassed on the internet yeah, like, yeah sure. ultimately i'm putting them on because i want them to break in i want to know if they fit well get rid of the heel slip like mm -hmm. i'm not putting on any outfits 
And it's a little right. concerning that I keep buying boots and have no intention of wearing them. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you there. I, I understand that, especially during this lockdown. It's like, yeah, people are out of their rhythm. And for me, I make it a point to every day I have a ritual. I wake up. There's, there's certain things that I do every single day, regardless of what's happening. I wake up, I take a shower, I shave, um, I put on denim, I put on boots, I put on a t-shirt or whatever shirt, and I make my coffee and I start the day. Like, so I am ready. I'm ready for anything. That's, it's my uniform. Uh, every single day I do it, it's my ritual. And so I don't see boots so much as like a thing to put on or like to wear. It's something that I'm living in really. So even if I'm just hanging around the house, I put, I still put on my outfit. I still put on my denim and my boots. And I, I know some people are weird about walking around their house with uh, shoes on, which to me is, is, is kind of funny if you, if you think about it, because it's like, I just don't understand the philosophy. They think shoes are dirty for some reason for walking outside. Well, I mean, if they were outside, I mean, and they, and they, you know, you, they co- I don't know. New York is a little different, man. You got like all yeah. sorts of stuff on the floor. Right. That's true. I don't know. It's like if I clean my apartment, the last thing I'm going to do is like trek in with boots. But I, I get the, yep. the point. For me, right. it's more about like I'm working remotely from a computer sitting down. Yeah. And I might as well just be really comfortable wearing like loungewear that I'd sleep in. Mm-hmm. I used to think like, oh, let me put on the outfit. Let me get ready for the day. Yeah. Whoever came up with that, what a bunch of horse shit. Pardon my French. It's good for the, like, if you know you're going back to work in two weeks or three yeah. weeks, it's good. But you expect me to get ready every day to wear clothes in my apartment that I now need to wash. Right. Because right. they're on my body. Yeah. Good point. Hell no. No way. So my point, I struggle to put on like these outfits. Mm-hmm. And like I said, the men's wear, right? The boots, the watch, you're like, I can't tell you the amount of times I've had to reset my automatic watch because I like don't put it on. Oh, interesting. I put it on for an hour and it's still not enough time to, to you know, so it's yeah, been a challenge and I have to really, I hope, I think there's, yeah. there's some semblance of normalcy coming at least here in the, in, in the New York area, but like, yeah, who knows? I have, I don't know when I'm going to put pants on again. Right, right. <laughs> Man, that's hysterical. Yeah, for me, it's just, for me, it's the polar opposite. Like I, I, I feel whole when I'm in my uniform and my uniform is like I said, my denim or my pants or whatever, my boots, I feel like I'm truly myself when I'm wearing boots. And it sounds dorky. And, you know, maybe the reason why I'm comfortable taking a departure from the whole, like lounging around in my, in my pajamas all day long and in my sweatpants, don't get me wrong, I love sweatpants and I love shorts. They're so damn comfortable. But part, part of why I don't do that is I think in high school, I used to do that a lot. Like me and my friends, we used to uh, joke around and we'd say, okay, tomorrow, come to school in your pajamas. And so we would do that. We'd come to school in our pajamas and we'd look ridiculous. And I I think I kind of got that out of my system early, like the novelty of it wore off. And so now like for me, like I want to wake up and every day I want to be my best version of myself. And I am the best version of myself when I'm when I'm wearing boots. Um, And like, even if I'm not going anywhere, like I don't need an occasion to wear my best stuff. When I was first getting into watches, a lot of people a lot of my friends who own nice watches wouldn't wear them to work. It's like, you have a Rolex, you're not wearing it to work. You have an Omega, you're not wearing it to work. They're like, yeah, no, only special occasions. I'm like, special occasions? What are you waiting for? You spent however many thousands of dollars on that thing. Wear it Wear it to work. I mean, oh no, this place isn't worth it. It's like, don't wear it for the work. Wear it for yourself. Right, right. right. And it's also, and I know our conversation is tailored towards like, the, the boots and all that and this is where i'll bring it back to that a little bit yeah uh, are you on reddit a lot or just the post that i send you you look at um yeah i i read the stuff you send me i don't peruse it like religiously but i do look at it quite a bit um in my yeah free- yeah. yeah so in my view i follow a lot of cool 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 stuff i think the good your well community on reddit is dope if yeah. you guys are watching you guys should give it a follow um it's yeah. awesome to join because there's all sorts of great reviews especially with new drops which i think is fun People take the photos, they talk about them, and these guys are like detail oriented, right. like just like you and I are, just like yes. <laughs> by the stitch. So it's fun to read because I geek out on it. Right. Um, but what they, uh, a lot of the call outs are a lot of these guys, they baby their stuff. Not good mm-hmm. or bad, right? That, it's not a criticism, but yeah. you know, they're afraid to you know, take their shell boots to Death Valley, right? And obviously right. that's a, uh, an extreme thing to do, but like I'm saying to just wear them out even when 
you know, more than you think you should. Like some people are like, yeah, I want to wear them and then rest them a week. I don't know what that actually means. Interesting. You know, I know right. wabasabi, like all that stuff, but like, it's literally not a lot. It's dead. You right. Right. You give it a day. Fine. I get that. Let it dry out. Yeah. Some one people day. Don't wear it. Right. Yeah. So I just find it interesting how a lot of people just don't wear their stuff. Just like the Rolex, just like the, you know, they need an occasion to wear. Yeah. Yeah. It's to, to me, I used to get it. Um, I think when I first bought my first Omega Speedmaster, I said, oh, this thing's so nice. And I, my immediate, like the, the feeling in my gut was like, oh, but I'm not going to get to wear it all that often. And so I, I wore it a little bit that day just to look at it. And then the next day at work, I wore one of my cheaper watches to work. And I'm like, <laughs> I got home and I'm like, screw this. I threw my cheap watch down. I'm like, I'm wearing my Omega. <laughs> so I, I started wearing my, my Omega every single day. And that's, I like, like But you have a Panerai on right now. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yes. So it's not on, is it on the other wrist then? You say you wear it every day. Where is it? I only wear, wear one watch at a time. <laughs> oh, okay. So you don't wear it every day for the record. No. Yeah. For the record, I don't wear it every day. For, I wear <laughs> one watch every day. Um, just not <laughs> all my watches every day. <laughs> I'm just keeping you honest, man. I'm just keeping you honest. There's a lot of fake stuff on, on, on you know, on media. So That's true. There is a lot of fake fake news going around that's for sure but yeah like um but again it's not for the occasion it's for yourself what where where whatever makes you feel the most comfortable do it for you um i know that me i just feel my fullest when i'm in a pair of boots um i bought the stuff i love it and i enjoy every second that i wear it so I'm, i treat myself by making sure that i'm in my boots every single day <laughs> yeah yeah i mean the interesting thing with watches though in terms of like wearing it I understand the argument, whether I agree with it or not, is irrelevant. Is yeah. like you're wearing these soles on concrete on outside, so they are going to wear, uh, at least somewhat. Okay, yeah. especially if you're wearing them as just a daily driver and not rotating like you and I do. Because if right. you and I are rotating, like I said to you before, I mean, these are never going to wear out if I wear them once a week. You know. True. Uh, but a watch, I mean, it's so small; it's on your wrist. It's not like it's going to wear out. I mean, exactly. in fact. It's not, from my understanding, and again, another good community on Reddit is the watches where you can really learn a lot about horology. Um, it's almost like a plane where it needs, to con it needs to move in order to, it doesn't like being static because it has the oils, it has all stuff that I don't, I'm not so familiar with, but it needs to, to move. Like the most dangerous thing for a watch to do is just to be idle, very much like a plane, which sounds counterintuitive. You yeah. leave a plane in the tarmac for, for three months, it needs to be disassembled and put back together, tested, and then go up in the air consistently. Right, right, exactly. It's got to be well oiled and it has to be used often and frequently. Otherwise, I mean, car, car lovers know this. You can't just leave a car in the garage and, and ignore it for 20 years. It's not going to kick By back. the way, speaking, speaking of footwear, I know you and I are not sneakerheads and I know you have a disdain for sneakers. Yeah. But I'm sneakers not... are the same thing, right? Like they're glued together. And if they're yeah. just sitting in a box, that glue dries out and that's it. So if you're a sneakerhead, man, you got to wear those shoes. That's true. Even if you want to keep them fresh and, you know. Right. That, that's an excellent point. I think this stuff is, you know, to a certain degree, not to get too philosophical with it. Well, I think we crossed that line already. But to a certain degree, this, this stuff is living and it needs attention and wear and use. Otherwise, it, it loses its luster. So, yeah, absolutely. Like, I, I could tell, like, we talked about earlier with our boots. It's like, you want to rest them a day. Some, I think it's yeah. better to actually rest most boots for three days. Um, but then you don't want to let them just sit for a year. You yeah, know? For, for, for a couple of weeks. Of course not. Also, you can't enjoy them when they're in a, in, a, in a box, right? Like, And that's my issue with my main point. Like, they sit in this box. Yeah. You know, I wear a, a t-shirt, I wear shorts, right? right? I don't wear them. I can't really enjoy them. It's literally in some way, although not entirely true, if they yeah. continue continuously sit in this box, I've thrown away, you know, how much were these boots? 400 bucks from Grant Stone, something like that. Yeah. Right. For the kudos, I think a little less, 330. But my point is it's a lot of money to just. Mm -hmm. Just sit in there. Put on a shelf. Right. Right. Not, not to mention the toe taps are another 50 bucks, you know, 50, $60, you know, so. Yeah. You know, if you're paying money for this stuff, you should wear it. Right. You should wear it. You should use it. You should love it every chance you get. That's, that's my point. That's, the, that's the philosophy that I came to. Cause yeah, when I first got into boots, it was like, Oh crap, when am I going to wear this? Uh, what situations, blah, blah, blah. 
it wasn't long before, well, it wasn't long before my collection got big enough to where I was like, I'm going to wear, I need to wear these every single day. I need to walk in these. I need to put wear on them. And, and like we were talking about earlier, you know, with the pandemic, my escape is just taking a walk outside. Well, guess what? I already have my boots on and guess what? They need patina. So I'm going to, I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. I'm going to get my breath of fresh air and I'm going to put wear on my boots and I'm going to get to assess right. them and, you know, right. Get, and you're already dressed, right? That's my issue now. It's like, yeah. Oh, I got to put on pants. And then I'm like, I'll go out in half an hour. Right. And then right. all of a sudden it's five, five thirty. Yeah. You know, here on the East coast, it, uh, you know, it's getting dark now and, and, I, and then I don't right. go anywhere. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's why I see getting ready every day, get, getting up, getting a shower, getting, getting your coffee. I don't know if you're a coffee drinker. Um, I'm not, but little victories. I get it. Make your bed, get, get ready to take on the day. Yeah. Rituals. Yes. That's, that's what it comes down to. And for me, I, I'm not kidding. One of the most enjoyable parts about my morning ritual is lacing up the boots. It's like, oh yeah, stepping into them, get, get the, uh, get the shoehorn in there, step down in there, lace them up. Whew. It's, it's, and I know, I know how you, I, and you want to know how I know how, I know you so well that I know how you lace up your boots. You'll put them up, the heel up, heel up, man, right? You put the heel, heel up, up and then you tie exactly. them because that way you get a good fit. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you can't, you don't stand, stand flat on the ground and lace your shoes up. What is this? The elementary school? No, 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 no. Everybody knows you need to arch your heel up when you. Yeah. Just kidding. There's more than one ways to skin a cat. I just, I find I get my, my best lace up when I arch my heel up <laughs> like that when I tie. <laughs> so you, you and I've been talking for a while and I think I, I kind of want to cover a couple more things before we, before we wrap. Um, so like, what is your, and I, I, I asked you about this, but I've never gotten an answer. Yeah. What is your favorite boot? Oh. Okay. Number one, what is the, what is the favorite boot? <laughs> right and fine you can give me one or two i know you got 50 and then yeah what is your favorite brand and i'll repeat this later and has that changed over time and what is your favorite brand today oh shoot yeah. it's like i guess like, like I, and i'll let you answer this but i have a feeling it's going to be like it used to be all then and then you know the exclusivity the pricing you've sort of moved away from that so that's kind yeah. of where i want yeah, your answer yeah, to come from for sure right now my favorite boot i mean oh my god that's literally just such an impossible question <laughs> all right so let's just say i lit a match right your little your little what is it your crystal lamp lights right. on fire right. right you're only able to take one boot yeah that one you have one in every room so they all light up right all all. at the same time they combust so what boot are you taking you have no choice you got to take a boot or you take nothing I would going to be wearing sneakers. I would run in and out of the house grabbing boots until I collapsed. <laughs> One boot. You got five seconds. <laughs> five seconds. Okay. Let, let's say like a nuke has gone off and I need to get in the car and just, just flee with my family. And, <laughs> and by chance I have one hand to grab one pair of boots. Oh shoot. Right now it would probably be the, some of the rare shell that I just got because I know how irreplaceable it is. But yeah, I'd probably grab my, my natural shell cord of an Edwards, my Grant Stones. That, that's probably what I'd grab. And then whatever was on my feet. So oh, that's, that's huge too, because yeah, I mean, you got, you have 50 pairs, right? 50 yeah. some odd pairs. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> I mean, by the way, I have this, so I'm on, I'm on, I'm talking to you on my MacBook and I have the, the Edwards sitting right there. I've been staring at it. If you see, you guys see me staring off into space. Yes. Because yeah. I'm like, I, I'm I'm looking at like the reflection of this boot because it's just so freaking just yeah. gorgeous. Yes, yes, beautiful. All right. Oh my god, so much it's gorgeous oh, boot. So glossy, so perfect. So it, it's it truly is a grail boot. And, and and that last we haven't talked about that. Maybe it's a conversation uh, for a different day. But that ankle, the way it, it holds it. Yes. Yes. Oh my God. I mean, it's an orthopedic sole. It was, it was designed by, by a podiatrist, a professional podiatrist from, from my, according to my recollection to, to be, you know, orthopedic. It's similar to the bar to the Barry last. Yes, it is. It is. It is. Similar. I think they took inspiration. I actually hit up uh, a Wyatt because remember I told you I was going to go hop and, you know, blow some money on some, some boots. And I decided, you know what? Yeah. Cause like, 
this is long-winded, but Alden just makes it so freaking difficult. No, it's not here. We don't have it on leather, but we have it on commando. Okay, if you want it on leather, it's going to be 11 months. Like, <laughs> the hell out of here. 11 months for a pair of shoes. Like, come on. Yeah, I've waited. I've waited myself. It's not even like pandemic 11 months. It's 11 months because it would be 11 months if, if everything was fine and there was nothing going on. So that, that so, is a great point. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. So my point is, I, I, I hit up, I hit up uh, Wyatt about it, and he told me that uh, yeah, it should be same size, same everything. But I have a feeling the inspiration is similar to Barry. Yeah, I think so. And and he does come from an Alden family. You know, his grandpa worked for Alden for over sixty years. Like that is just incredible. And uh, and and to my knowledge, Wyatt is friends with a lot of people at Alden still. He's friends with people at the Shoe Mart. So. I mean, yeah, they're very, they're very much interlinked. So I think why it's just part of the family and, uh, you know, he, kudos to him for, for doing his own thing with it. You know what I mean? Like I would say that the Leo last is similar to the Barry in a lot of ways, but I still, I love the hug right here. That's that, that little bit of a hug right there is, is what I love most about the Leo last. It's so comfortable, perfectly rounded at the toe, similar, similar to the Barry, not quite as uh, pronounced, I would say as the true balance. Uh, it, it's not quite as wide, I don't think. Again, yeah, just that back here, back here is just the best. <laughs> as soon as you yeah, see. yeah. So, so is that is that to say that? Do I also take it that today, mm -hmm. Grant Stone is your favorite shoe brand? If I had to say that, if I have two favorites currently, it would be Truman and Grant Stone. Yeah, yeah, Truman for the uh, the rugged work. Much boot. different. Yeah, very different. Very very different boots. Similar but, price points though. Right, right yeah. around three, four hundred bucks. Sometimes yeah. a little more. Absolutely, S similar price points, but um, given the price, given the workmanship and the materials, and just everything about them, the the brand image, the brand personality, everything about both, I love. I think Grant Stone nails the dress boot look, and I think Truman nails the the service work boot look, the rugged work boot. I think is yeah, it's I on rubber totally. Yeah, absolutely. You know, what I think Grant Stone is so good at, I, have you seen that? It came out like probably over a year ago, but they put out a video um, sort of introducing Grant Stone, right? Because yes. like what they faced that was an issue, and I think it's still an uphill climb, and I think it's slowly being eroded, is mm -hmm. like the Made in China. Yeah. Which is funny, the people that are typing it on Reddit are also using an iPhone made in China. So <laughs> I don't, that's not, I don't know why that's not lost on them, but it's certainly not lost on me. Uh, that it's made in China. Well, you know what I mean? And then the socks that they have their, their Aldens on are also made in China. So, oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. The, the, what, what's the word I'm looking at? The bias. It just, you're going to have good things that are made abroad and you're going to have mm -hmm. bad things. How many things that are made in America like are shit? Yeah. Right? There's a ton. It's just yeah. about, it's about the specs. If you get good specs and you're willing to invest in good materials mm -hmm. and good worksmanship, you're going to have a better product, whether it's made by somebody who's Chinese or someone who's American. And so... But well, my point in all of this is what I think is, is so impressive about Grant Stone is that video, why it talked about how the, the product came first and all yeah. the advertising and all the ancillary stuff came second. Yeah. And this is strictly my opinion from a branding perspective. Mm -hmm. I mean, they just nail it. Yeah. Overall, man, the entire journey of a client when you're mm -hmm. starting off with Grant Stone is like the website is absolutely beautiful. Yes. Right. <clears throat> and I'm not going to get into the pre-orders because we know how all these, you know. Oh, yeah. All in third party authorized dealers deal with it. They're like, put your PayPal in. We'll let you know in six months if we even got the money and if you're getting a makeup to the side. Right. But like they make it easy as hell. Yes. You order, I think by 1 or 2 p.m., you'll get it two days later, business days. The fit and finish is absolutely impeccable. I haven't heard one person on reddit and again anecdotal at best so take it as you will right i remember one person say hey these are messed up the, right. the quality control is just awesome yes it is. Um, i hope i don't eat my words by the way i just ordered yep. the black chrome excel on leather as opposed to black on black and i had them actually sent right to the cobbler as opposed to you know paying an extra 25 bucks to ship them so i have to believe that the quality control is excellent because yes. once you make a hole in the leather, you can't return them. My point is, it's like, I don't even worry about it. I think what impresses me the most is like the price point they nail, the quality control is there. Mm -hmm. the branding in terms of like the aspirational of what you want to 
what you want others to see you like, I, at least for me, is there as well. Right. And if I'm any other shoemaker, I'm pretty scared of, uh, of Grand Stone. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't know what their volume is, but I would be scared in terms of like, you know, these guys are what, a handful of years old and yeah. people only know them over the last maybe one or two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. I'm with you. I mean, I've never had a flaw in my Grant Stones. They're, they're chunky in all the right places. The, the finishing is, is always perfect. You know me. I'm willing to overlook a lot, but with Grant Stone, it's like, I'm I know all the way by how perfect it is. I'm like, geez, how? The, the, it's just so exacting. You know, they really nail it. Whoever builds these boots is very talented. I will say that. And oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And they're in China for all, for all the people that are, uh, are hating. They're uh, right. I, I told you this, but I'll say it for, for, for on record anyway. Yeah. I, uh, I got my, my first boot from Grant Stone was the diesel on, on rubber. Right, because I just didn't have an appreciation for leather at the time. Right. Again, the same old salt in the rain, slippery, like, okay. Right. Uh, you know, again, you, you evolve. Yeah. So I get them, and they're, I have small feet, 7.5D. I'm 7.5 in the True Balance last. Like, it fits me like a glove. Yeah. So I put this on, and, and it fits good, right? And I think when you first put a, put a shoe on, it's hard to tell whether it's perfect or not, right? You got to walk in it. Your feet need to swell a little bit. You need to, right? But I yeah. send a photo to Wyatt and I'm like, Hey man, I got the boots. Thank you so much. What do you think? Mm -hmm. And the guy gets, he got, you know, it's $400 sale for, for him. What, what does he do? He takes a screenshot of it, <laughs> then marks it up with red and says, Hey man, they don't fit. And oh. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes right here. You have a high instep yeah. you need to move to an E-width, right? And you're going to then have a perfect fit. Huh. And that speaks volumes in terms of a guy that cares he already had my money now right. he's gonna and i don't know i don't think i had to pay for shipping back but even if i did i don't but either way he allowed me to ship them back they were already worn right, right. so meaning like they already had the creasing right because chrome excel like as soon as you step you know you tend to see that creasing Indeed. and he sent me a brand new pair of boots and that probably i don't know if he resold it or they went a seconds i was just really that's impressed true. and that's that's why i think they're the premier brand yeah, for me at least. Yeah, that's true. I mean, Wyatt, he uh, he did a similar thing for me. He was, him and I were talking, and they were getting ready to send me a uh, pair of boots, and he said, "Man, are you sure you don't need an E?" He's like, uh, just looking at your at, at your instep, and he's one hundred percent right. He called this to my attention. I have a huge instep. I mean, it's it's uncomfortable sometimes. If if this area isn't elevated enough right here yeah the pressure you feel like you're blood pumping yeah it just it just kills me it just it's it, you know and it's part of my skeletal system so it really it hurts when i walk and it hurts everything else so and he was he noticed that like right here on all my boots it's sort of um it's sort of pronounced it's like when i lace them up yeah the gap you feel the the pre the, the pressure the, yeah it, exactly let me see if i could if I could replicate it, but yeah, essentially like right here, it, it's, it sort of bulges out and he noticed it just right there. And he's like, I'm yep. going to send you an E along with the D's and um, you pick the best one that fits. Um, but here's the thing with certain leathers that stretch out, they do stretch out and they become more comfortable. So I'm okay with the D width on the Leo last. Now that said, so I, I sent him back the eight and a half E's that he sent me because you know, they, they would have been great. They would have been extra generous, extra good. But I know that that leather also stretches. So I, I stuck with the D there. But he's, he, is, he has an amazing eye for fit. And, uh, and yeah, so if I were to ever order like a pair of his, of their sleeker, like dressier shoes, I would definitely go for an E with. Um, like the Alexander last? I think they have Leo and Alexander, right? I think there might be one more or no? Yeah, I think, I think the Alexander is, yeah, is their dressier last. If I were to order those, I would either go from an eight and a half D to an eight and a half E or just order a half size up to a nine. That's something that I'm just so impressed by with Wyatt and, and Phil from Match and Leather mentioned the same thing. He's like, Wyatt can look at shoes on your feet and tell if they're the right size. Or not. Yeah. So, but the real point is the real point of all of this to me is like today. And mm -hmm. I think with the, and again, a conversation for a different day, but I'll make this point. If you are a, 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 an enterprise running a business. Yeah the consumer comes first. I mean, I'm in that business today. And if right. you don't care about the consumer, you have lost. 
Right. And that's why I really think in terms of my experience with a lot of these firms, yeah, I really think there's a chance that they go the way of the dodo. If you have yeah. companies like Grand Stone respond to you within 24 hours, but not only that, but give a shit about right. how you feel about their product. That's true. So to put a bow on it full circle is yeah. like, in his video, he said that the product came first. We didn't really understand the advertising and, and like the branding. Yeah. But like, maybe it's intrinsic. Maybe that's just, he, he is the brand and it's sort of, and the people that work for them also have bought in to mm -hmm. this. Yeah. And I'm a, I'm a customer for life because of it. Cause again, I've had some other companies and it's just like, you know, you're shit out of luck. Right. Right. Yeah, me too. They, they've entered the scene. They're fully ready to engage with people on Instagram, on social media. They're very responsive, very collaborative, very friendly guys. And yeah, I'm with you, man. It's, he wanted to make the best shoe he could and let the rest fall in its place. And he had, they've done a hell of a job, I would say so far. I love my Grant Stones. Like I said, I've got, I've got a couple more pairs on the way and I just, oh, I just love everything about that Leo last. And they're definitely a competitor in the industry these days, a strong one, definitely a strong one. And, and the more time goes by, I see more of these boot reviewers reviewing Grant Stone. It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. I don't know if you watch Carl Murkowski's video on them. Yeah. But yeah, I saw it. It's, all, it's, it's about, is it new? I, I think it's two to six months old, something like that. Yeah. It's, older. It's, Within the past six months, yeah, and it's very good. Yeah. You did a very good job on that. It's great to hear all these different testimonials of people that, that try the Grant Stones. Because at first, I'm like, you know, the first time I saw him, it was on, on uh, Andrew Carr's Instagram, Innate Cairo. You know him? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Tattoos, yeah. right? He's cool. He's a cool guy. Yeah, he's a cool guy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That, that was the first time I saw Grant Stone. And, and, so, same, same. Yeah, okay, nice, nice. And uh, I was immediately drawn in by them but you know initially i'm like ah oh, it's a new boot brand i have all these hesitations about trying a new boot brand but now i'm like you they have earned a customer for life <laughs> in me. yeah i mean they come out with a show i mean you I, I speak for you too i mean we're buying them yeah like we're take, them. charge my credit card charge it just take my money <laughs> just put it on what do you card. um so like and i guess this is the way to to, to wrap is like there are yeah. all these brands so like do you think these other brands have a chance of really surviving? Like Thursday, I know is doing well. Yeah. Thursday boot. And they also have uh, their sneaker company, which is nothing new. I think is associated with them too. Right. Um, they look like the Converse. Um, yeah. But using yeah. recycled goods. Do you think they have a spot, a place in the space? Oh yeah. they Cause it's like, but... it's hard to go from not wanting any boot to grand stone. I think it's a tough jump. Yeah. Again, you're hovering at minimum about 360 is what, but it's like four, let's call it 400 bucks. Yeah. That's a lot. Cause at first when you don't know what you don't know, you're thinking, all right, I'll spend a hundred bucks. That's uh, you know, it's what I will spend on a sneaker. Right. right 150. Right. Yeah. I think yeah. what get like Thursday might be such an important company because they're like, okay, these are awesome. What else is out there? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Exactly. They, they could be, a but good again, story. it could be me projecting. I don't know. Yeah, no, and I think you're touching on a good subject here. It, I think a lot of boot brands have popped up in the recent years because there was kind of a need for younger guys like us to find an affordable boot, an, an affordable price point to to segue into the boot world. And so there's a lot of there's a lot of companies out there right now that are doing amazing things. So yeah, I think I think they will survive. I think all of them are doing really good. I guess my point of what I was saying before, there are a couple things points. Cost does not equal quality, number one, just to put that like that, that post-it on the wall. True. Because uh, I think a lot of people, and I think we run into that a lot with all sorts of things, right? With, with yes. denim, with shoes, with cars, right? Like, oh, yeah. you know, you, you give me a Benz, it's not going to last me more than a Honda or a Toyota most times, right? In terms of its reputation. And I think the same applies with, with boots, but... I've, I've had some interesting experiences because the point I was going to make is like, it's hard for somebody who, who wants to get into like nice shoes. I have a buddy who doesn't really have a good sense of style. Uh, he's 30 years old, single, and it's, he's not single because he doesn't dress well by any means, right? That's not, that's not the case, but yeah. he wants to up his game and he's becoming much more aware of the, of how he wants to tell his story to the world, which I think is what you're essentially, what we're essentially interested in, right? Like the aspirational story that we tell ourselves and we also want the world 
to see. Yeah. I can't see if I, if I show him a pair of like Alden's or even, you know, Grant Stone that we keep talking about, it's like, you can't afford that. Like, at least it's hard. It's hard. It's not palatable for him off the bat. He can afford it. It's just yeah. in his mind, he cannot afford it to justify the spend. Right. So that's why I think a place like Thursday has a place in the space. Mm-hmm. Although I am not a fan of the last, but I think they have an important place nonetheless. I bought a, uh, my first experience with, going a little bit more upmarket, like you said, I went to Clark's and I think the Clark desert boot, man, yeah. if you're looking for a good desert boot, man, oh, I'm yeah. talking about that brown one with the crepe sole. I mean, I think it's the best desert boot there is. Oh, I know yeah. J crew has their own. It's a little shorter, but I think it's awesome. But anyway, I went from that and I wanted something because I think that's four inch, right? The Chuck is four inch by mm-hmm. definition, four, four and a half that. inch. And yeah. then the high boot service boot is six inches. Right. And then you have everything else that you just look like an asshole. Yeah. I don't know why people are wearing those. Anyway. Bloggers. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. stop. Okay. Right. But anyway, so <laughs> my point is I, so Taylor stitch, are you familiar and do you own any other stuff? I am familiar. I'm very impressed by the pictures I see. I don't own any, any, oh, my- dude, their photographer needs a freaking raise because he's dope. <laughs> but anyway, they were getting into footwear and basically their whole thing is that they have the workshop where you fund it. Um, and then assuming it gets fully funded, they will make it right. And you'll get like 20, 30% off, you know, 15% off, whatever. So they started getting into, and they have great, they used to be made in America. They recently moved to, to abroad and, uh, to the Asian countries. Uh, and they got some flack for it. And they said, they said exactly what I said in terms of doesn't mean it's bad. We're still care about the environment, quality, paying people anyway. So they got into Goodyear welted boots and they put it in the workshop. Again, you don't need to be an expert to know that making a boot is much more difficult or a shoe is much more difficult than like making a shirt, right? You have the suppliers, they're coming from, you know, 10, 12 different places. And yeah. then it needs to go through a, a comprehensive quality, you know, process. Anyway, this was delayed for like weeks on end. And then I get it. It has um, loose grain. It doesn't bend well, and it really turned me off. And if mm-hmm. this is what I'm expecting on a 300 plus boot, then I don't want it. And then yeah. what what got me into it are my Chippewas, the service boot, the Renegade service okay. boot that they have from J Crew. Right. It's a Vibram, you know, thick, beefy sole. I had my first one was in color eight, and then I got it in sort of the Rambler color that you have your Trumans in. Oh, okay. And yeah. those were. Those were some sick boots, and I thought that was like the cream of the crop, right? Like the creme de la creme. Yeah. And then, like, you look at the sole, and it's, like, glued on, (laughs) right? The heel is glued on. It's not, like, even completely. Right. And then I decided, because of you, to move a little bit more upmarket. So I got 405s. And then I started looking at Grand Stone, and I had the same sort of, uh, you know, I was nervous. And I finally pulled the trigger, and I haven't looked back since. I still think they're the best company. but. Bottom line is, what do you think about all these other companies that are, you know, sub, you know, 250 and below? And I think we could throw Wolverine in there when they're on sale. Mm -hmm. Red Wing, when you get like 10, 15% off, you could put in Thursday. Uh, I mean, what do you think? Yeah, That was long-winded, but I wanted to tee it up. No, that's a good question. And uh, I think each company has its strengths. You know, I think at this point, it's not so much – of a question of who makes the best boot. It's uh, each brand has their own niche and it's, it's very nuanced the niche that they fill, but each brand really does have their own identity and their own place in the market. From what I can tell Um, Thursday, you know, they're very ubiquitous now, like they market well, especially to the younger college crowd. So the college kids all know about Thursday boots, you know what I mean? And, And I'm kind of with you. It's like, it's like their last, I don't know that it would, that it's the perfect one for my foot. I think that the perfect last for my foot is, you know, like the Barry last or the Leo last or something like that. But, um, but yeah, I think all these different, so to address like the Red Wings and the, the Wolverines. Chippewa's in there too. Chippewa's, they've been around for so long. So they're heritage brands. They have a large fan base, a large customer base. You know, I mean, Red Wing, the people that follow Red Wing are almost, I mean, they're, they're uh, cultish. It, it's very cultish. I, <laughs> I didn't want to say cult, but yeah, that was the word that came to my head. Was no, I mean, in a, in a semi-positive way-ish. Yeah. I mean, cult is always negative, but you get my point. 
yeah, they're also the fave crew. That that too, and and I notice whenever I post a my Red Wings or a pair that looks similar to Red Wings, I get a ton of likes because there are guys that love that aesthetic. Yeah, it's Truman, the Truman. Yeah, that beefy sort of the, on the on the P seventy nine last. Right, right, exactly. I think I think Truman's aesthetic is is closer to Viberg um, in a lot of in a lot of respects. But like, uh, but yeah, for some reason, when when I post something that's that's Red Wing esque, kind of like my Mark Alberts, it, they get a ton of likes, and there's people out there that really like that look. I mean, I could go on and on all day about this, but I think each company has its has its place. They each attract different types of customers. And, you know, as I think as long, broadly speaking, as long as the economy does well, I think all these boot makers are going to do well. Um, I remember when I first started researching about Alden, they were, Alden was there and they were competing with like, there were like 20 other makers at the time. Floorshine was one of them, but most of them dried up during the Great Recession. Alden survived somehow. They continue. They're like the one brand that continued to make shoes during the whole time. <laughs> They, they, they were the only one that didn't dry up. I think as long as the global economy continues to do well, I think all these different makers are going to do well because I think they all have their niche. Like we said, Thursday, uh, Taft is another one that seems to be marketing very yeah. well to yeah. certain, you know, the younger groups. And yeah, I mean, we see all these Indonesian makers popping up now too. We got Oh yeah, man. They make some nice shoes. I see some of these shells. Yeah. Like 450, 500. I'm a little apprehensive about it. Yeah. Like, and they, they take the photos. They're not like, they're not like Taylor Stitchering your their photos. Here. Right. Taylor Stitch has like a fantastic photographer, and no shade on them for doing so. Oh, great. I'm saying yeah. this is they're taking photos with an iPhone, uh, yeah. or whatever. But you can see the shoe for what it is, and I'm right. I'm impressed. Very impressed, and I hear nothing but good things about Underhood and um, Junkard, Sagara. They all make really good stuff. There's another new one, um, Renav Goods Co. out of Indonesia. I've heard nothing but just stellar things about them. And then Flame Panda in China is just doing incredible stuff. Yep. Another Chinese maker that's just doing top level work. In fact, I'm so close to putting in a custom order through Flame Panda. You got to send me something after this tonight. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I'm very tempted to go for, they do like a roofer model, but he could do it in like an olive color. I've seen several iterations. I kind of want to do all of Shell Cordovan. It's expensive, but I mean, he's just... What about Osmo, man? I but I know it's a separate... We'll go back in a second. That's just... Oh, yeah. Put a pin in that. Yeah. Osmo. Is that, am I pronouncing that right? He's like a guy in like in Nor in, in Finland or, or Nordic country. Yeah. Who like lives in the woods and like makes shoes. Yeah. Right? His famous models along with like the two tacks almost, yes. right? On the leather. Yeah. He puts the tacks. He does yeah. stitch down exclusively. Yeah, I'm right, sure right. he does it like in his in his hut in his cabin. You don't have a he doesn't have a Goodyear wall machine. Right, exactly. He's very interesting. He does uh, exceptional work. The way that he does it, you got to bid on him. Yeah, yeah. Good for him. He'll build a boot in a random size, a random makeup in a random size, and say, "Hey, these are for sale. Who wants them?" And then he it's a lottery. Whoever he decides will get them gets them. I haven't had the chance to. I haven't been lucky enough yet to get. I can't throw my money away like that on risk on risk if they fit, you know, with the ease and like, I have a 7.5, you know, on Brannock, it, the whole thing is just risky. It is. It definitely is. For me, it's like, I've lucked out a couple times and seen him feature my size, but it wasn't a makeup that I needed at the time or wanted. So I think with his unique sort of business model, I think he's going to continue to do well. I don't know that I'll ever own a pair. Uh, some of my friends have them though. Ticho Blanco has a pair. Um, the Denim Dentist has a pair. And then uh, Matt Shibui on Instagram. He, he's yeah, got he lives in uh, Jersey, I think. Yeah, he does. Yes. So so those three have them. But yeah, again, I just, I don't know that I would ever happen happen upon the luck or fortune to get a pair of them. What do those run for? Yeah, I mean they're expensive. They're like um, after conversion, I want to say they'd be about seven, eight hundred dollars, similar to Viberg. The boot community is very enthusiastic about him, and rightfully so. And they're willing to shell out because yeah, Osmo does incredible work. He's an interesting guy. He sources in whatever leather he's interested in, and he'll build a boot just by just he he lets his uh, intuition guide him with how to build it, what size, and everything. And then he makes a living off that, you know, and he doesn't live extravagantly. He doesn't have a big, no, no, no. it's 
more or less a hobby and it's what he's comfortable doing and I really think that's respectable. They will end up costing about the same as Viber to my knowledge. They're under my thousand dollar price point so. That's true they are under that so yeah. They're so. in budget baby. Maybe if not. I was to get a stitch down boot I'm a good I like good your welt like you said I like the clean cleaner look and yeah. again aspirational that I can keep resoling them recrafting them as many times even though I will never uh, yeah. but if I was to get a stitch down I'd probably yeah. go through him. Yeah, yeah, he's he's great. I mean, he has nothing but rave reviews. I'm with you. I love I love the Goodyear welt, especially the Storm welt. I think it just looks so damn good. Whew, look at that. I love a Storm welt. I love that. Yeah, so good. I love it. Hell yes. Yeah, me too, man. Yeah, I'm I'm all about that Goodyear. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm just a traditionalist, but you know, I, I just I prefer the aesthetic, especially this 360 degree Goodyear welt all around the edge there behind the heel. All that perfect. So, yeah. Dale, we went through uh, a ton. I mean, we put an agenda together, I think about a week ago and edited it together. We went through it all. I mean, we've been we've been on for a while. So that's all I have for now, unless uh, you have yeah. anything to add. I think we should do this again. We will definitely do it again. I had fun. I think we bounce off each other well. And uh, I don't have anything else to discuss at this time, but I'm sure we will... Uh, we will create many new things to talk about. <laughs> Look, as soon as there's a new drop, we'll have something else to talk about. So, we will. Absolutely. It's like tomorrow or Monday or yeah. whatever. So in no time. <laughs> All right, Dale. I'll All talk right, to man. you later. Yeah. Good talking Be to you. Well. Man. Peace. Yeah.